paradigm shift. An educational comedy. It's not a cause. Not a movement. It's not a social group you can slap a label on to. It's, it's an, an idea. idea. It's an intention. It's an intuition. A mindset in which reality can be explored. It's a genuine expression. A certain way. Critical thinking and imagination. To look inward upon ourselves. To better understand the external world around us. And yes, we egos are bound to be bruised. With our silly, strange, politically incorrect. Your style of going about things. Real, Real and raw honesty. Which invites you to be to the, the fullest. fullest. Hello everybody, welcome to yet another edition of Paradigm Shift, an educational comedy. And today we're talking about using social media to raise consciousness and um, this is discussing the idea of using social media to raise consciousness but no need to get uh, all mystical about it if you don't want to. Simply put it is merely discussing social media in the context of actually making a difference rather than just a bunch of meaningless lip service because God knows there's a lot of a lot of meaningless uh, lip service going on on social media just as much as there is you know actively working to gather with people to raise consciousness to raise awareness to to practically apply things and you know to do things in such a way that actually makes an impact and makes a difference in within the realms of quote unquote real life rather than, you know, someone just being all emo and just being up there like, love and light, love and light, love and light, or we got to take down the New World Order and blah, blah, blah. I'm feeling butthurt, so I'm going to, like, shake my fist, and I'm just going to meme and scream all sorts of stuff, and yeah, blah, what you know, it's like we, we see all kinds of, of ridiculous bullshit like that, and, you know, it's really hard for people to... Um, discern the difference oftentimes between what's actually making a difference and what is merely, you know, listening to someone just, you know, shaking their fist, you know, rambling off a bunch of crap or someone who's in such a state of of denial of things they need to face within themselves that they go into this new agey, lovey lighty, you know, floating off into this meditative haze and it's just you know it's it's just completely you know ridiculous and it can be hard for people to know the difference between the two so I want to break it down as simply as I can and of course simple um, usually means lots of detail <laughs> It's almost cognitive dissonance or counterintuitive to what most people have been taught to believe as far as what is simple and what is complex. Because really, for something to be more simple, you need more information. I mean, a lot of something doesn't mean it has to be, you know, mind-boggling and brain imploding. But it's like, you know... What what's more simple to you? Like you know, if you if you ask someone a question, hey, what's that TV show about? If someone just gave you a one line answer that was using all sorts of complex language that you had no frame of reference for, then that would be a very complicated one line answer because you'd be looking at them like, what the fuck was that supposed to tell me? But if somebody rambles off a paragraph in very simple, straightforward language that really paints a, a clear picture about what that TV show is, then you're going to be like, oh, okay, well, you know, that was simple enough to understand. Thank you. So we're going to try to keep things as simple as possible with this, which means it's probably going to be really long. <laughs> but before I go into things, what's your your take on this topic, Rich? What have you noticed? What do you have to say about it? 
Well, it comes down to uh, social networking. I often see a lot of, uh, you know, mixed feelings about it, especially in, you know, the, you know, conspiracy theorist communities out there. You know, they say, well, if you're using social media, that means you're a tool of the globalists and, you know, you're bought out and you're paid for, you know, because if you're truly independent and free, you don't need their social networks and their constructs. Mm -hmm. But what people fail to realize is, is that if you don't use the tools in front of you, I don't care if, you know, the hammer is made by the globalist empire factory, if you fail to use the tool, how the hell do you expect to build the thing that destroys, you know, their creation? You know, you use their their tools against them, essentially sabotage. Yeah. That in and yeah. of its that in and of itself is a globalist meme, you know, to make um to to make to make your enemy fear using you know the tools that they could use to take you down. Imagine if if you know back in World War Two, if the Allies could have made you know the uh, the Nazis you know fear using all guns and all bombs some sort of weird belief system that they're gonna go to hell if they use it or or whatever kind of mind fuck like imagine if if we could have like pulled that on the Nazis and we could have just gone in and freaking bombed the shit out of them and the war would be over in 24 hours you know they wouldn't have fought back and that's essentially the psychological warfare that's used against us within all this silly, you know, conspiracy shit. Like, especially within the monetary system. I mean, whether people like it or not, we use a money system right now, okay? And, yes, it's a corrupt money system, it's fiat, but we use it in this moment, it's, it is needed to survive. And, yes, it'll be great if in the future we have some sort of you know, anarchical, voluntarianistic, Star Trek, the next generation sort of, you know, economic system to where everything is all fair and wholesome and good and wonderful and towards the progress of humanity. But you know what, people? We're not fucking there yet. We are not. And we have to face the fact that we are not. That we, You cannot see the elevator to go up to the top floor if you're in denial of being on the ground floor. You know what I mean? So it's like... We are where we are right now. And so, yes, we can use that that globalist created money, and we can use that to gain the tools to change the world in a, in a more positive way. So the idea of, like, oh, stay stay away from money and, and, and go off the grid because it's a, it's a fiat system and it's evil and it's, and it's blah, 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 well... Going off the grid and all that is a great idea for those who can do it. And yes, it's a fiat system and it's evil and blah, blah, blah. But you're connecting two things together that don't connect. Like both are true, but the way they're being connected is, is a load of shit. Because the way it's being connected is like saying, oh, just lay down and die and just, you know, you know, let the powers that be just fucking trample you to death because, you know... If you don't let them kill you, then you're doing something wrong. So let's fight the globalists by by letting them kill us, by not defending ourselves, and just by being complacent while bitching at other people and calling them sheep and saying they're complacent while we ourselves are being complacent. And you see a lot of that sort of stupidity on social media. Just like, you know, making money with um, you know, with the YouTube Partners program and things like that. You'll see a lot of people that are that are preaching like, oh yeah, well, you know, it, employment is is slavery. It's it's indentured servitude, and you've got to be entrepreneurial and and be your own boss and don't have any masters or any servants and and get out of that and change change the world for for the better by by being sovereign and being your own boss and all this and that. But then every time anybody tries to do it, it's like, oh well, you're a scam. You're fraudulent. Um, you're you're a, you're an Illuminati shill. You know, if you were if you were real and legit, you wouldn't be monetizing your videos on YouTube. You're just you're just there to make money and mislead people, and you're a shit. And it's like, wait a minute. So, so then you ask them, 
what is an honest living then? And they give all the answers that their so-called enemy, the globalists, would want them to give. They say, well, if you bust your ass being a slave to your enemy in this and this and this and this field, then you're making an honest, legitimate living. But if you actually do anything to liberate yourself and free yourself well, then you're evil and nasty and a fraud and so on and so forth. And it, it just it makes no sense whatsoever. And I look at these people and I laugh and I'm like, do you even realize what you're saying? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, to have fun with life, to enjoy life, to revel in the treasures and marvels of life is a crime when you're, you know, bent over in the coal mine, as it were, and, you know, laboring away with a pickaxe at the coal, and you got charcoal all over your face, and you're breathing in cancerous fumes, you know, now that's a legitimate living, you know. Yeah. That's, that's honest, you know, you're killing yourself doing it, you're going to die in five years, but by God, you are honest, and you're, you know, suffering for what? <laughs> <laughs> and, as long, and as long as you're doing it while you're cursing the globalists, then you're a loyal patriot. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's, you know, as long as you're making shells for Darfur, you are, and complaining about it, you are a legitimate citizen. But if you're enjoying yourself and living life to the fullest and not suffering, how dare you shame Oh yeah, that's that's another freaking thing. Like there there are so many so many people that are quote unquote truthers that that are that are like there's so much so much misery and and suffering and horrible things going on in the world and and if you're living a a happy life then you're a you're you're a complacent heartless apathetic fool and and how dare you be happy while while other people are suffering and blah 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 and and all this and that and it's like it's totally ridiculous because I'm like guys wait a minute if the problem is that people are are suffering and in misery and and so on and so forth because of these misery paradigms they're not empowered they don't understand their true potential so they don't rise up and you ask these people well what what would get them more motivated to to be empowered and rise up and all that and usually get answers like well you know if they had things to be thankful for you know if they they had empathy and thankfulness and and gratitude and and maybe if there was a bit more more kindness in the world and and more compassion you know then things would would start start to shift if if we had that and it's like okay well then if you want to put that into the world doesn't that mean being a living example of that would then serve to put more of that into the world. If you're being a living example of all the misery and suffering and stupid shit that's already a problem with the world, then you're just adding shit plus shit equals more shit. So if you can learn how to be happy and prosperous and so on and so forth, then you have a duty to then as that example, do your best to show others how to do the same. And if you're being that and you're showing others that, then aren't you uplifting people out of that state of misery and more into empowerment? And the more you do that, doesn't that mean the more the globalists are losing? And the more you are an example of this misery suffering paradigm and rejecting happiness and rejecting all the good things, aren't you just helping the globalists? Aren't you just helping them to win? Aren't you just helping your enemy? And these people don't understand that. 
I mean, me and Katarina used to know this guy by the name of Kyler Davenport who had that attitude. He's just like, I'm Kyler Davenport and I'm right about everything and I, I'm always right and, and fuck you and if you disagree with me then you're a little whippersnapper and da da da. And all these bunnies and kittens and rainbows, they just they just make me sick. And all these people that are happy, they just make me sick. Because there's so much suffering and death and murder and global scumbag going on that I don't know how anybody can be happy. If anybody can be happy, they're just they're sinning a against God, because how dare they be happy while there's all this bullshit going on and da-da-da. It's like, Kyler, you're you're a part of the disease, and you're promoting the disease, and you're spreading the disease. You know, I'm not... I'm a cancer cell. How dare you be a healthy cell? We need to <laughs> indoctrinate you. We need to poison you with our GMO-made products <laughs> of death. How yeah. dare you be a happy cell? You can't I mean, be happy. I'm uh, cancer. <laughs> I'm going to kill the entire body. In the I, I mean, I, I agree with him about the New Agers to where a lot of these New Agers float off into such a fake blissful mind cloud that they're ignoring everything around them and not actually do any, doing anything about anything. I agree with him on that, but he's gone so far as to stereotype the idea that if anybody is happy at all, being prosperous at all, just at all, then uh, that is equivalent to new agey complacency. You know what I mean? And to me, it's like it's two two sides of the same coin. Whether you go into the total misery extreme or the fake bliss extreme, it's still two extremes that are away from the center. When you're in the center point, then you've got more clarity. You could you could see all around you what's going on. You know, it's a more clearer picture. But, it, you know, I mean, I like to think of it like a ship. If one end of the ship was heavier than the other, what's going to happen? That ship is going to sink. So it doesn't matter if you go into super-duper fake happy or you dive into total misery and ignore the existence of happiness. It's still two ways to get to the same thing. It's still two ways to fuck yourself in the ass. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's just like, you know, why... It, <clears throat> what amazes me is how these people can just live in this illogical kind of mampy-pampy land where it's like, you know, oh, if you're happy, that means you're delusional. You have to be miserable because the only reality in the world is misery because that's all human nature is, is misery, and there can't be any other possibility but misery. That's the only reality, and if you don't accept the reality, you're delusional, and you're insane, and you're crazy, and blah, 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 blah. You're not aware of what's going on. And it's like, no, no, I just don't buy into the global BS that you have to be mopey, dopey, grump, grumpy all the time, you know? Yeah, you ever notice how, like, if, you know you're ranting or raving about something or even if you're just grumbling to yourself talking to yourself and and it's overheard and if you're you're grumbling all sorts of negative about how life sucks the typical reaction from people is going to be like oh well that's understandable life, life does suck that's perfectly normal to uh to do that but if anybody hears you talking to yourself or ranting or whatever about anything you're thankful for or appreciative of it's like, uh-oh, did they join a cult? Um, did they need to go see a, a psychologist? Are they delusional? Oh, my God, they're happy about something. That's that's not right. They're, they're not right in the head. They shouldn't be happy about things. That's, no, that's wrong. That, whoa, there's something wrong with them. And then people actually, like, get worried about you when you're happy. But if you're disgruntled, hey, cool, we live in a shit world, fine, let's let's bitch about work, let's bitch about the mayor, let's bitch about the governor, let's bitch about the globalists, let's let's bitch about religion, let's 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 bitch about them 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 stupid gays or let's bitch about all those people that don't accept gay rights or let's you know let's do all this divide and conquer shit sexuality religion politics let's bicker and bitch and piss and moan until we die an early death let's but you know that's fine 
But if you have the audacity to be happy about anything, to appreciate anything, to be thankful for anything, well, whoa there, buddy. You need to go on some meds. There's, there's something wrong with you. Or you must be in one of them cults, one of them new agey cults, yeah. Because you're 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 thankful for something, so that's that's trouble. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you're if you're happy about life, mm, that's worse than being a terrorist. You're either miserable or you're with the terrorists. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's essentially you know what the, it's kind of like. What? So I'm an Islamic Shiite extremist if I'm happy. About life. Hmm. Gee. Yeah. Then, it, then of course, if you, if you see things in terms of opportunity instead of burden, like you're like, oh, well, look at that terrible thing going on over there. Let's go do something good in the midst of that terrible thing to uplift people and and use that as an opportunity to make things better. Then people are looking at you like. You're crazy. You can't do that. How how if you if you see the negative as a positive opportunity, then you're just a horrible person. You're just like you're just like getting getting off on on misery or something. How you can't see that as a positive opportunity. Otherwise, you're just a terrible, apathetic, nasty person who's probably borderline serial killer or something. My God, you're not allowed to do that. That's creepy. Ew. I bet people react that way way to me sometimes. Like, you know. I'd be going on what I thought was a really uplifting rant about, hey, there's all this bad in the world, but you know what? Here's how we could use this to make good of it, to make to make to make the world better, to really bring people together, to really uplift people. And I've had people look at me like, dude, that's so horrible. That's so negative. How can you see the world like that? That's terrible. And I'm like, like I'm, I like I stop and I'm I'm confused like by the reaction. I'm like, wait a minute. That's terrible, really. Saying let's go in and make this better, let's go in and uplift people, let's go in and improve upon things. That's terrible, really. That's horrible. That's creepy, really. I'm <laughs> like mind blown. <laughs> well, making the world a better place. Hmm. No, can't do that. Um, bitching about how the moon landing was quote unquote fake, we can do that. Um, bitching how 9 11 was an inside job, we can also do that. Um, bitching about how the globalists are evil scumbags, we can do that. Bitching about how all of those poor people in Africa can just burn up and die, you know, we can do that. But by God, if you do anything to fix a problem or to prove, you know, the facts in a positive and uplifting way, and, you know, have fun doing it. My God, you're an evil person. How dare you, you know, prove that 9-11 was a false flag in a fun, enlightening way. How dare you prove that the moon landing is not a hoax in a fun, enlightening way. How dare you go and help people in Africa and give them food. And or, e well or even and, worse, you know. or, or even worse, how dare you prove that two things that are opposites can be true at the same time. How dare you prove that the moon landing was and wasn't a hoax at the same time? How dare you prove that the footage was fake and simultaneously we did indeed go there and maybe there are things on the moon that they don't want us knowing about. You know, that's 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 another tactic they use. They'll go and do something completely real. They really did it. But then they'll show the masses a crock of shit about it. And then the so-called truthers will latch on to the crock of shit and they're so narrow-minded they'll be like, okay, because there was or there, there, this here was proven to be a crock of shit and this is talking about that, then that thing that it's talking about must also be a crock of shit. It's like the same mechanism on which high school gossip thrives, you know, that, that, that you know, that people fall for the line of bullshit. When something is proven to be, to be bullshit, they mean that because shit was talked about this, then this, that, the shit was talked about is also shit. That's how gossip works. 
that's that's fucking you know like like you know tenth grade garbage, but mm-hmm. it works because when people a- when people ask ask me you know like you know did we land on the moon or 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 you know did we not it's like you know just kind of like yes to all was it a hoax was it not yes to all because there were some aspects that were a hoax kind of like there's there's a lot of you know fake bullshit that happened with 9/11 that's proven to be fake but you know it would be as ridiculous as trying to say well because that particular thing about 9/11 was proven to be fake that means that the the the, the world trade center never came down the towers are still there somehow some way they're still there don't believe they're not there and that's ridiculous that's stupid you know, just because someone is telling lies about something doesn't mean that the something didn't happen. It just means that the official narrative might be a crock of shit, but it doesn't mean that the event itself didn't happen. It doesn't mean that 3,000 people didn't really fucking die. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, I mean, either way, you know, however you look at it, I mean, you know... <clears throat> It's, you know, yeah, we've been all societally, well, most people have been societally conditioned to accept the only reality is misery, and, you know, some of us are more immune to looking beyond that narrow-minded view, retrospective reality, you know, mm-hmm. but the way society is currently, you know, everybody's been raised with that idea that, you know, misery is the only possible, you know, reality that, you know, there's no fun way of doing anything that has to be arguing and, you know, back and forth, tomato tossing and mud slinging and, you know, bashing at each other's character. Uh, there can't be any agreement to disagree. You know, we all have to just hate each other and not get along and, you know, bash one another just because we can't agree on all points of Topic or matter, you know. And I want to, I want to, I want to point something out because I know someone in like the comments section of this video is is going to point it out. It's it's happened before. I want to, I want to straighten this out. People will even if the video is not on, like they'll hear the the flicking of the lighter and the sounds, and like you know they'll be like, oh, someone's token up. It's like, no, I honestly wish it was weed. I wish that it was legal here. I'm all for medical marijuana and all that. But this, my friends, is tobacco. Sorry to disappoint. Well, why does it look like a metal weed freaking thing then? And Well, because I used to try to use the wood corn cob pipe things, but they would deteriorate quickly, and I wasn't willing to spend, like, you know, $20 every three months. The metal pipes are more durable. But, um... As long as we're on that. Now, I'm not advocating smoking tobacco. Don't get me wrong. I'm not, like, saying, yeah, kids, go smoke tobacco. But I will say that the natural tobacco, like, I smoke bugler tobacco. You can Google it. The natural tobacco is far less addictive. Whereas, like, not only is the, the like, the, the mainstream stuff, like, way more addictive because they lace it with, like, 10 bazillion, you know, freaking chemicals to help totally fuck you over... But, you know, it's just the natural stuff is, is definitely better for you and it's less addictive and it's it's really um, good to, to use if you are someone who, like, smokes two packs a day and you want to reduce it. Um, what I had to do is give myself permission to actually enjoy smoking instead of fighting it. You know, what you resist persists and that's how I got up to two packs a fucking day at one point. And then when you give yourself permission to enjoy smoking and then you use the natural tobacco, um, what you start to find out is the amount you're smoking starts to reduce, 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 reduce. So now I'm at about the equivalent of like a pack every week or two and continuing to slowly go down. So so just saying I'm not advocating anyone smoking tobacco and nor am I advocating anything against marijuana. I mean, my God, um, Weed not only has so many different health properties that, you know, the globalists don't want us to have, but, you know, the uh, the rest of the plant, the hemp material, 
uh, you can you can make wood, you can make paper, you can make plastics, you can make clothing. There's so many things you can make out of it. It's it's freaking insane. So that plant is definitely a, a threat to the freaking globalist empire there. But just to just to let people know, anybody who hears the clicky and sees the thingy and like, oh, I know what he's doing. No, you don't. <laughs> Sorry, it's tobacco. Sorry to disappoint you. Shut up, Dave. It's wacky tobacco because only occultists smoke wacky tobacco. And if you think weed has anything more than, you know, getting you addicted to heroin, you're delusional and insane, psychotic, and go fuck yourself because, you know, I'm Henry Kissinger and I said so and I can speak in his voice. Yeah. Like, 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 De like, you know, Dennis Leary said. Marijuana doesn't lead to other uh, other harder drugs. It leads to fucking carpentry. You start making a bong out of everything. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. I mean, I can honestly say that I wish it was legal here in, in Illinois, but it's not. There's a lot of politicians that are trying to make it legal, and I hope they succeed. But, you know, as much as I, I wish this was that stuff, it's not. It's tobacco. Bugler. It's in a little, like, greenish um, greenish pouch. Actually, let me... You know, and again, I'm not advocating anybody start smoking. So, like, any, any parents, you know, seeing this or whatever, don't be horrified. I'm not trying to advocate that, you know, your your son or daughter start getting on a nicotine habit or something. No, 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 no. Um, I just want to show a picture of this very quick. Okay. Um, I'm going to go into screen share mode right quick. Okay, this is Bugler Tobacco, and it's pretty good. I mean, I, I do the little, the little pouch. Of course, you know, they sell it in, like, bigger, like, canisters and stuff, too, but I do the little pouch. So, yeah. This is what's in my pipe, folks. Right here. That's the stuff. Now, again, I'm not advocating anybody, you know, start smoking or anything like that. So, you know, parents don't need to, you know, need to freak out or anything. Um, well, I just saw the little green thing that asks present to everyone, screen sharing and presenting to everyone, and blah, blah, blah. So let me just put this... Uh, up again just in case it like didn't like come through. Sometimes I forget to to do that. Okay, yeah. There's the Bugler tobacco in case anybody missed it and you know they sell it in pouches and canisters and whatever. But again, I'm not, you know, advocating, you know, any, you know, freaking teenagers or whatever go and, and start you know, smoking, you know, tobacco or anything like that. I'm not, I'm in no way, shape, or form advocating anybody start any kind of a nicotine habit. So any parents that might be tempted to, like, get mad at me for saying this stuff, no, 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 I'm not, not advocating any of that, no. I'm just stating that if you're already smoking cigarettes, that going to the natural stuff is going to be better for you in the long run. You live longer. So that's all I'm saying. But getting back onto the topic itself, as far as using the social media to, to raise consciousness, I've, in my experiences, the key is to be raw, honest, and genuine, as Katerina likes to say, you know, being you to the fullest, and you know, so on and so forth, because it's that that honest integrity that really inspires people. And 
it doesn't matter if you're in a quote unquote negative mood. I mean, you could be really inspiring if you're just in a freaking like, you know, emo fucking bitch rant, but you're doing it in such a way to where you're facing your paradigms. You're not like, you know, playing the blame game and, you know, going off on some fish shaking rant or whatever that you're you're kind of acknowledging how you're feeling and why you're feeling it and then kind of diagnosing that and doing some introspection and looking at that and kind of asking, you know, why am I feeling this, you know, um, you know, what, what are the, what are the components of this, you know, and, and kind of treating it almost like being a, a computer technician, you know, kind of diagnosing the spyware, so to speak, and gaining an understanding of your thoughts and belief systems and emotions and and through doing that you can start to kind of reprogram yourself and on social media when you do that sort of thing very publicly when you have the the courage to let people see you you know not not just you know putting your best foot forward and talking about love and light or not only when you're in the most confident mood and sitting there all all calmly going okay we have to defeat the new world order here's what we're going to do troopers you know not just those confident moments but you know being willing to really share the the stuff that most people are scared shitless of sharing because it's like, oh my god, if I show people that I'm human, people might think I'm 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 crazy or, or nuts or just, you know, needy and, and wanting attention or blah blah blah. Yeah, you know, you're gonna get some haters that are gonna think that. Hey, fuck them, right? Um, you know, there's always gonna be people that are gonna like you and always people that are not gonna like you, no matter what you do, no matter what you say, no matter how you present yourself. There's no way to get everybody to like you. That's just not going to happen. That is actually a Nazi idea. Everyone's thinking the same way, agreeing on all the same stuff, everyone liking each other. That is the basis of Nazism, and that that is an impossibility and can't ever happen, and that is the delusion. So I've noticed in my experiences that when you're just real and raw and honest, that's that's when you start to inspire some people, and that's when, when lives change. Um, I know that I've changed, you know, for for the better by watching, you know, similar people do that sort of thing, and I know that I've helped people, you know, like you and Kristen and Katerina and so on and so forth, um, help change, you know, more productively. And no, I'm not sitting here barking any orders like, oh, you need to do this, you need to follow that, da 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 da, but just treating them like a human being and not being authoritative with anybody and just sharing who you are and letting them share who they are without like judging the fuck out of it and just you know just talking about how you feel and and discussing topics and just being like okay well I feel like this about this and you know then a discussion about okay well you know why do you feel that way and and trying to find other different ways of of looking at the situation and going through it like that, that's being a friend, that's being a, a psychologist, if you want to put it that way, friend and psychologist, there should be like no difference between the two, because healthy psychology is, is authenticity, it's not reading a bunch of bullshit in a fucking college textbook, and then thinking you know it all about psychology, you know, so I have had seen that I've had impact on people to where you know, they really made productive changes in their lives. They they went from one type of lifestyle to another because of that influence, and then they, in turn, have done the same thing and, and helped others and so on and so forth. Like, you know, Katarina's inspired, like, a shitload of people, and she tells me all the time, Dave, if it weren't for you, I wouldn't be doing this, and, you know, then those other people wouldn't be helped and so on and so forth, and... Am I trying to put myself on a pedestal and saying that? Fuck no. I'm just an equal, regular human, just like the rest of y'all. My point is that the individual does have this power. And it doesn't matter if you're rich or poor, if you're young or old. It doesn't matter if you're awesome at making videos or, or you suck or, or if you're the best speaker in the world or the worst speaker in the world. or It doesn't matter what the fuck you are. Every human being has the that ability to be the spark that gets the fire going. You don't have to be the whole fire. 
society insists you have to be the whole fire. Like, well, if you want to do any good in this world, you have to have millions and millions of dollars and start up a non-for-profit and, and spread out to all these places and do this and do that. And that's a pile of shit. So the power of social media to raise consciousness is in really being authentic and wanting to deal only with the people who equally want to be authentic, only dealing with those people. And again, I'm not talking about judging anyone or shunning anyone. It's simply a matter of fact that birds of a feather kind of flock together. So the more genuinely empowered you really are, and I don't mean like, you know, telling yourself that you're feeling empowered but really you're not. I'm not talking about self-deception or self-delusion. I'm talking about really truly being of that state of being. People who are of the opposite state, you're going to annoy the shit out of them. They're going to want nothing to do with you. So that separation will then be automatic. It's like the garbage will take itself out. So only receptive minds will come towards you. And then as those receptive minds come towards you, then because education is a two-way street, you start learning from them as well. I've learned from you, Rich. I've learned from Katerina. I've learned from Kristen. I've learned from Rochelle. I've, I've learned from everybody who's learned from me. So it's it's a sharing process. It's mutual. It's you know it's it's a give and a take. It's not one sided. It's not one person up on the fucking podium while all these other lowly people are down here listening to the fucking wisdom of Dave Kelso or what the fuck ever. Fuck that bullshit. Your thoughts. Oh, yeah. Um, <clears throat> kind of catching me drifting off again a little bit because, you know, you're just right on the money. But, you know, yeah, you know, everybody's perspective is equally valid. And, you know, we are all the masters of our own circumstances. And, you know, we are all. Oh, just let, 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 let the words come on their own. Don't don't try to force them. Just let it flow. Don't try to oh, self, not, to, don't try not, to self censor. I'm not self censoring. I'm just <laughs> what do I say? That you haven't already said. Well, anyway, you know. Yeah, we're all the masters of our own circumstance. We all do our own thing, and you know, really, that's just kind of the the make of just how life is in general. You know, we are all going through our own motions and all, you know, doing our part in this world, as it were. You know, we're all going through our trials and tribulations. We're all going through our ups and downs, and you know. The ego kind of likes to put people who are farther along, as it were, on a higher pedestal, you know, farther along in their walk or journey, as it will, on a higher pedestal and say, well, because... Target range. Far, <laughs> yeah, pretty much target range, yeah. <laughs> because pretty much, you know, you look up to people who are farther along in their journey and, you know, Kind of sit there and self judge and go, well, because I'm not there, I'm never going to be there, and blah, 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 blah. You know, excuses to be in sleep. Or, and, or you, you know, I, I've, no, I've, I've noticed it with a lot of people. A lot of people like to self sabotage and, you know, self destroy themselves, and, you know, it's just one of those things, you know. Putting people up on a pedestal also gives you someone to blame, too. Like, well, they're supposed to be the guru and, and tell me how things are done. So if I try to do it their way and then I fuck it up, well, that's their fault. Because they should have somehow magically, you know, bestowed upon me the power to not fuck it up. So that that's their fault. I blame them. They they suck. It's all their fault. It's like you know, um, politicians. You, you know how many persons I see that do to God? Mm. Oh, well, because... Well, I wasn't blessed from that. That means it's his fault. Fuck, fuck him, you know. 
Or Lord the more Lord polite Lord. way, the, the more polite way, it's God's will that I'm suffering. Yeah, right. Uh, I don't know about you, but I miss the 11th commandment that said, thou shalt absolutely must suffer and go out and suffer more and suffer, suffer, suffer. I miss that one. Yeah, exactly. You know, and it's it's ridiculous. Surely people, you know, I was in an argument argument with my mother the other day, and you know, we were talking about circumstances, and you know, and how people can get themselves into situations. And she's saying, well, nobody's going to get themselves out of a situation without God's help. And I'm like, really? Surely, surely He, the Master of His own demise is certainly the uh, master of his own arising. You know, what must fall must rise back up, right? So is what about well, what about what I I'd have asked her? Well, what about free will then? If uh, if someone of their own free will has a belief system that their own suffering is the only reality and they are always setting themselves up to fail based on that belief system and that's their free will to believe that then if if God respects free will and will allow humans to use their free will how they want without interference and God gives you all the tools to, to help yourself but then you won't do it why does anybody think that God is going to come down and, and sit you down for a cup of coffee and be like, look, man, I don't like what you're doing. I, I don't like the way you're exactly. believing. So I'm going to come in and save you from your free will. God's not going to do exactly. that. And he doesn't do that, you know. Hey, did God do that for the Roman Empire? No. <laughs> no. Did he do that for the Greek Empire? No. Did he do it for the Chinese Han Empire? No. Did he... Is he doing it for the United States? No. How about the Catholics? Nope. Lutherans? Nope. Protestants? Nope. I don't see anyone sitting down for coffee with God where God's like, yeah, you know, I'm going to have to save you from yourself because I don't like what you're doing with your and, and what, I, what, I, what I really love is the end times revelations. You know, they all sit there and they, you know, Scream, oh, we're going to all be raptured, and oh, we're all going to get out of this misery, and oh, we're all going to go be ignorant, dumb, stupid morons in heaven and just not question anything and just be bored in the end. You know, and I'm just sitting there going, really, so we're just going to be locked in a white, puffy place with a nice gate and gold roads, and that's just going to be the end of it, and nothing else, and we know everything, and there's nothing else to look into, and blah, 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 and everything a little, is solved. A little, a, little, a little gated community prison called heaven. There we go. Yeah, I'm going, that's, that's <laughs> what I'd be looking forward to in the afterlife. I mean, that kind of sounds like hell to me. That doesn't really sound like, you know, exploring the universe on the deck of a starship, and, you know, going interdimensional and meeting all these different races of human beings. Your video and audio is crapping out a little bit there. You're getting some distortion. Um, I can't hear you hardly. Something's taken a paradigm shit. After these messages, he'll be right back. And now a word from our sponsors. Do you have a small penis? Take our pill. It'll make you as big as a dinosaur. And now we return you to our scheduled programming. I can still barely hear you. The energies are bending over his microphone and going. Take it, bitch. <laughs> I 
Ah, kind of love technical difficulties. Can still barely hear you. Yeah, this is weirdly fucked. Like, I, I don't know what you're saying. I can only barely hear that you're talking. Obviously, I can see your lips moving when you speak. But your mic volume's like, wait, no. There we go. Now we love. Yeah. There we go. Now your audio has returned. Testing one, two, yep. three. I can hear you. Yes, definitely. Okay. We, we're good. We are good. You're good now. Sometimes a good old tap on the microphone never hurt anybody. You just had to beat the shit out of it in order for it to work again. <laughs> yeah. I've got your rapture right here. Just two of these little pills a day, courtesy of Monsanto, and you will be raptured. <laughs> yeah. Right. As I was saying, you know, I view heaven as being on star on starship, you know, exploring strange new worlds and boldly going where no man has gone gone before, you know. Not being locked in a little gated community somewhere just sitting there twiddling my thumbs for all eternity, that kind of sounds like hell to me, no offense. Mm -hmm. You know, and so many people buy into that typical narrow-minded narrative of that's what it's going to be like. And it's like, really? That'd be <laughs> kind of boring, don't you think? And I've always questioned, you know, a lot of older people on that. I'm like, eh, eh, don't you want a little something more? And they're like, shut up, don't question it. And I'm like, <laughs> What, what do you mean, don't question it? I mean, think about it. Do you want to be like, shut up, don't question it? Uh, just, it'll just be good. I don't know how it's going to be good. It'll be good. You just shut up, you ungrateful, stupid idiot. And I'm like, huh? I'm asking a question. I don't want to be locked in a gated community for all eternity. Sorry. Yeah. No. Your com your conversation with your mom reminds me of a joke. It's an old joke. It's been around forever. You've probably heard of it. Most of the people who are going to be watching this video have probably heard it too, but either way. Um, one day there was this, there was this guy, and um, you know we had a house and everything, and um, it started raining, and it was really downpouring and his area was starting to flood. And the water got up to like a, th uh, like a you know, like a, a two, three foot level, something like that. And this freaking, you know, like National Guard, you know, Humvee vehicle, you know, drives in. And they're like, come on, come on, the place is flooding. You know, we'll, br we'll bring you to safety. And the guy's like, no thanks, that's okay. God will save me. Now the water's six feet, and you know, these guys, you know, they're 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 going through in these, you know, little little canoes and everything, and they see the guy, and they're like, "Come on, come on, come into the canoe, we'll take you to safety." And the guy's like, "No, oh, God'll save me." So now the water is just up below the roof of his house, and the guy's standing on the on the roof of his house, and um, National Guard helicopter comes flying over. You know, with a ladder dangling down and everything. Guy on the megaphone, like, come on, grab the ladder. Come on, we'll take you to safety. We'll take you to safety. He's like, no, no, that's okay. God will save me. God will save me. The man dies. So, after the man dies, he goes before God. And he says, God, I have a question. Why didn't you save me? God smiles and laughs. He says, what do you mean? Why didn't I save you? I sent you a truck. I sent you a boat. I sent you a helicopter. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, exactly. 
God helps those who helps themselves. It's a free will factor. Mm -hmm. Exactly. It's like, yeah, a National Guard helicopter comes... Why, why do you think soldiers call, you know, helicopters angels? I mean, think about it, you know. They can get you out of some pretty hairy shit. You know. Why not take it? Mm -hmm. Why not take it? Reminds me of this picture I once saw of this um, this this um, Apache helicopter, like you know, forward facing into the camera. You could just see the front of it and everything. It was all clear. And the caption reads, "We made it beautiful because it's the last thing some people are ever gonna see." <laughs> yeah, and the Apache has been called a very ugly, ugly thing. <laughs> Beautiful in the eyes of the people calling it in, but for the people getting hit with it, not so much. <laughs> so that's kind of, that's kind of an oxymoron. Yeah, it is. I just thought the picture was funny. <clears throat> well, yeah. I mean, it's you know, and I was just sitting there going, and I and I, remind, and I was telling her, I was like, you know. The mass, we're the masters of our own free will. You know, we do what we do. It's not, you know, it's not God making that choice for us. We make a choice to do something or to do nothing. It's not God making that decision for us and saying, this is my will. You have no choice. Fuck you. It's, you know, you have unlimited choices at any given time. It's just, you got to make the decision of whether or not you want to take it, you know. And that's that's the case with you know with a lot of things, you know. <clears throat> the ability to act or the ability to do nothing, you know, that's that comes down to the individual. That has nothing to do with you know. Yeah. God or the Holy Spirit intervening to do something to force a, a decision. A decision comes down to what's going on in the mind and what's going on in the heart. You know, I'm reminded of another bit of arrogance that I sometimes see on social networking, especially within groups and stuff where you know, all these so-called truthers are there and all this awakening and blah, blah, blah. Um, you know, there will be a group or whatever and, you know, I'll post some article or video or whatever and um, all of a sudden I'll start getting bitched at. That's old news. We've, we've seen that before. That's blah, blah, blah. Why are you posting that? It's not up to date. And I'm like, guys... It's old news for anybody who's ever seen it, but last I checked, the majority of the planet probably hasn't seen it yet. So it's like these people are so arrogant, like, well, we're awake, so fuck everybody else, you know. Well, we're going to treat it like it's, a, like it's a, a weekly TV show, and we want, we want our fix of that new exciting entertainment. And it's like at that point, it ceases to be about you know, spreading truth and spreading information and encouraging discussion and critical thinking and raising the vibration of the planet and, and making things better. At that point, now it's about this little group wanting their little entertainment fix and getting mad because you have tossed them now in, in, the equivalent of an episode of a TV series that they've seen before. Maybe it aired two years ago. and you know They're like, that's old. I've seen that already. I want the new episode. I don't want the old episode. And it's like, well, wait a minute. What about new members of your group who are newly awakened, who, who don't know about all, all this shit yet? who are in the beginning of their awakening process, who have never heard any of this stuff, never seen any of this stuff. Aren't they important? Weren't you there once yourself? W weren't you once in that very same position that before you knew it, you didn't know it? So what, we're supposed to like look at the majority of humanity and be like, fuck you guys, you know, you're, you're late. 
it doesn't matter if you know if ten years ago you were you were um, you know a, a little kid and weren't able to see or understand all this. Fuck you. You arrived too late. You were you were born too late. Fuck you. You know or you know just all it's just this fuck you attitude about about people who are not as caught up as they are in their learning process, this hubris, this arrogance, like, I'm so knowledgeable, fuck everybody else. And it's like, really? You're, you say you're running an awakening and awareness group, but you have this uh, this attitude of arrogance and hubris that anybody who's, who's, you know, just starting to awaken, well, like, fuck you, too bad, you're too late, fuck off. It's like, it's really arrogant and really stupid and like whenever uh, whenever I see that type of attitude within groups especially when it comes you know from the people running the groups like if a few of the users of the Facebook group or something have that attitude but the admins are cool and they're like I ah, don't worry about them um, then you know I'll still post stuff but when the admins of a group have this attitude of like hey why are you posting this in my group that's old news and blah 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 I just stop posting to that group <laughs> I'm just like, okay, if that's how they want to be, they have the right to run their group that way. That's their group. That's cool. They can they can do that if they want to. But I don't want to be involved with that level of hubris and arrogance and apathy and, and self-righteousness that gives no fuck about anybody else. Because to me, it's just hypocritical. Oh, yeah, they're, they're a part of an awakening and awareness group, but they're acting like that. <laughs> yeah, okay, whatever. Have you come across that at all? Have you seen yeah, that type of attitude? Precisely. Oh yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, it's really despicable, is what it is. I mean, it's like you know, if you're not on their level, you know, well, you're just nobody, and it's just like screw you. If you don't, if you're not as up to date as I am, you're not worthy of being a part of this, or you know. Screw you, blah, 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 blah. You know, it's a typical attitude, and I've noticed it a lot in Western countries, you know. People are so used to instant news, instant this, instant gratification, instant right now, you know, that if you show them something that's two years old, say, like, um, like DJ Chops, for instance, you know, he was on for a couple of weeks, and we talked with him and hung out with him from the Gambia, you know. He'd never been on the internet before. He was that was a brand new thing to him. You know? Yeah. So what what am I, you know, as a Westerner who's used to it, to say, you know, fuck you, yeah, I don't care, get out of my face, you know, blah blah blah. You you're not you're not on my level, so that means you're a big dumbass and I don't want anything to do with you. You know. What what would that reflect of me to say shit like that about, you know? Say stuff like that to a guy like him, you know, or yeah, treat cause... somebody who is brand new to something mm -hmm. and act like they're not allowed. They're not allowed to be exposed. You know, there, there, there's more than one type of experience going on at any given time, and you've got, mm -hmm. you know, you've got to use discernment and realize kind of what you're dealing with. And to cover old material isn't a bad thing because, for a lot of people, they'll look at that and go, oh, you know. Because they haven't seen it before. Yeah. You know, Plus, I like going. I like. I like going back. I like going back to old material to gain new perspective. Because you know, if the last time I watched something was ten years ago, I've learned a lot within that ten-year period. So when I watched it ten years ago, I was viewing that through the paradigm filters of how I was then, and so that's my memory of that material through those filters. So with 10 years more experience, I can then go and revisit that information and gain a whole new perspective about it that I wasn't capable of gleaming 10 years ago, just as an analogy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, through learning comes experience, and through experience comes knowledge. And, you know, it's not fair to people who are new to a different experience to treat them like shit because they're not up to your par of the standards, you know. They'll be there, you know, in time. You just gotta nurture that process and just let them, you know, 
Yeah. Progress step by step. And you can just, you know, toss them out the airlock or out the back of the cargo lift ramp, you know, on an aircraft. You can't just toss them out the back with a parachute, you know. You gotta you gotta give them time to adapt and to learn and to see and to yeah. you know. And then as far as using um, you know, social media to raise consciousness, like I'm going to use this as an example here. Um, um, TSU, also pronounced Sue, you know, TSU.co. Here's the paradigm shift page for it. I know Rich has a page for it. You know, we all typically tend to have a, have a page on here. But, um, you know, as far as those of us involved with PSEC anyway um, and others. But one thing I, I've noticed especially, you know, about TSU is that it really is about establishing genuine connections with uh, like-minded individuals and I haven't seen really too much bickering or bitching or arrogance or, or things like that and you know like you said before there's there's a lot of people that are like oh well stay away from social media it's run by the globalists and blah 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 and this and that but the social media gives us the the ability to to inspire each other and a lot of the stuff that's posted on social media, I mean, you got to admit, I mean, especially the more empowering stuff, because of the society we've grown up in, it's inspiring because it's not common sense, even though it should be. Like, um, you know, there's a lot of people who are not very artistic-minded because their their minds are narrowed. I mean, if to me, having an artistic mind is direct directly relates to our ability to appreciate the things in life but has nothing to do with being able to draw the best drawing or paint the best painting or you know create the the newest most popular musical composition or whatever um, like here Rochelle de Young posted art is the most intense mode of individualism that the world has known and it's a quote from Oscar Wilde and um, she uh, she has a deviant art account and she paints and draws and takes photos and stuff and so she kind of hand made this and this is I, I do believe a photo of something that she's she's created by hand but the quote is totally true and it's something that people don't normally think about because we're locked in this misery society um, life begins at the end of your comfort zone this is true because comfort doesn't mean we like something. It just means we're used to something. We're used to misery. We're used to suffering. We feel safe in it, even though we don't like it. Because we're taught that if it's familiar, feel safe. If it's not familiar, see it as a threat. But life begins at the end of your comfort zone. Got to got to step out of your comfort zone to really experience the magic of life. Um, don't miss the sun today, worrying about the rain coming tomorrow. I mean. Uh, we're taught to, you know, have our minds split in two. Half of our mind is regretting the past, and the other half is worrying about the future, which leaves no room for the now. And the only place you can make any difference whatsoever that matters worth a fuck is in the now. Um, then this one. Don't pretend to be someone you're not. It's better to suffer being who you are than it is to suffer trying not to be or trying to be someone you're not. Now, is this advocating suffering? No, it's just making a point. It's saying that you're not going to have nearly as hard of a time if you're if you're being authentic, because all the all the inauthentic people will hate you so much that they won't want anything to do with you as discussed before earlier and if they stay away from you <clears throat> then they're not causing you drama and trouble and fucking up your life and then more people who are of like mind will gravitate towards you and you won't be pushing them away because you won't be trying to appease the people who hate you and are trying to force them to, to, to like you you know I mean fuck those people and I don't mean that in a contemptful way. I just mean that they have the right to, to be who they are. So if they want to be all fucking misery, gloom, and doom, you really have no right to claim that they can't and no right to be a Nazi on them. Just respect that you are too different from them to you know be in their circle and 
let them drift peacefully because they will. Only if you try to be a Nazi with them will they try to be a Nazi with you. Someone can only energetically vampire you if you are also trying to do it to them. Leads to the next one. Whoever is trying to bring you down is already below you. Exactly. There's no reason for anyone to try to bring you down to their level unless you are already above their level. You know, if you're you're in a bit more of a happier state than they are and they're being all, you know, fucking misery paradigm, then the fact, even if you're only slightly above them, I, and by above, I don't mean superior, I just mean, like, higher, like, you, you know, just like, you know, five is higher than one. It doesn't mean it's better than one. You know, the, the, the fifth story of a building isn't superior to the first story of the building. It's just, you know, just a tool of measurement. But... There would be no need to try to bring you down if you were already at, you know, that person's misery level. People are very intimidated by people who are at a higher level. And again, I don't mean superior. I just mean that, like, you know, if someone's completely hateful and miserable, then even if you're not in a happy state, even if you're just in a mildly annoyed state, mild annoyance is still higher than total misery and self-loathing. So they're going to perceive mildly annoyed as a state that's higher and try to bring you down into misery and self-loathing. Um, never be bullied into silence. Never allow yourself to be made a victim accept no one's definition of your life but define yourself exactly as soon as you decide to explore who you are and be yourself to the fullest there's always going to be people who are going to have no shortage of anything bad to say about it oh you're being delusional you're in denial you're you're a bad person you're being offensive you're you're offending this culture you're offending that religion you're being disrespectful to that tradition whatever oh you're not conforming to the status quo that makes you a troublemaker that that makes you a terrorist that you know blah 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 and then of course um here's one that uh that I actually did today because I was catching up on a, a TV series called Once Upon a Time, which is a really good paradigm shifting series. Um, Rumpelstiltskin on that series, um, I, I noticed a quote he said that I had to really had to jot down. If you ignore the gift of time and always rush into things, then you will never be ready. Exactly. We, we're taught this instant gratification attitude. Um, we're thinking if we don't plant a tree seed today and have a 40-foot tree tomorrow, then we somehow failed or something is impossible or blah, blah, blah. You know, we're just running ourselves in the frickin' brick walls all the time. And, you know, you might think that, that posting, you know, little quotes and things and spreading this sort of stuff on social media is irrelevant and it's nothing but, but you know, the same old lip service and it's it's just, you know, self-deluded affirmations and whatever. But honestly, there are people out there that, like, really need to hear this stuff, that, like, this is really what they're looking for, that, you know, reading something like this might make the the difference between inspiring them to keep going in a bad situation or or the state that they're currently in which might be pondering committing suicide maybe because you posted something and they saw it they decided not to kill themselves today I mean you know there's there's a lot of that sort of stuff going on too so you know through social media when you're genuinely being the change you want to create that's really you know how to create the change I mean, there's a, a lot of people who are just up there for, you know, trying to be famous and trying to say things that sound good to the masses and they're all artificial and fake about it. I'm not suggesting of being one of those people, but whatever it is you feel, you know, share it. I mean, any of these types of quotes, if you don't agree with this, if that's not you, then don't share it. You know, share something that is you. Just just be authentic. You're still going to inspire people. 
even if you're still not quite to the awareness level of realizing that life begins at the end of your comfort zone and all this stuff, you know, maybe you're just at the level of what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Okay, po you know, post that. There's people out there that don't know that. There's people out there that are just like, oh, life is hopeless and blah, 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 and I should just go slit my throat right now and blah, blah, blah. You know, I mean... It's it's amazing what one little action from one little person can do to 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 change other people's lives dramatically. So again, it goes back to be you just need to be the spark, you know, to get the fire going. You don't need to have millions of dollars and go on a fucking massive crusade and start a nonprofit organization or whatever, you know. I mean, just little things done on mass. And that's really how the world is changing. And this is how the positive changes are coming about. I'm not suggesting something in the context to where, oh, nothing's happening, so let's do this to make it happen. I'm saying ch positive change is continuing to happen because of shit like this. I'm not saying, well, nothing's happening, so let's do this and see if something happens. I'm saying things are happening because of shit like this. This is fucking practical application. So that's what I have to say about that for the moment. Yeah, exactly, you know. Being honest and being yourself is the most important thing that you can possibly do. You know. <clears throat> and you know when you are being yourself, people people's reactions to you change. People how people perceive you can either be in shock or, you know, it can just be a, a refreshing relief that they're finally seeing you're coming out about who you really are as a person, you know. But yeah, I mean, learning to be yourself is the first path to freedom. You've got to, you got to learn really what it means to be you as an individual, you know, not what society wants to slap you as being, you know. You gotta you, you gotta learn you how to speak. Speak. You speaking gotta, of you gotta, you gotta learn. I have a I have a question. Um I just you know you don't have to get into all the you know the little personal details about this because I know the, the time is not right for it yet. But generally as you've made you know positive shifts there have obviously been some friends and family members who have reacted in, in a positive way and looked at you like, like you know, that shock, but still at the same time, like, oh, well, it's good that he's growing up. Then there's other friends and family who have, like, unadded you from Facebook and been like, oh, oh, he's not being the way we're used to him being, so he must be changing for the worse and da-da-da. And just if you could generally go into people's reactions, positive and negative. You don't have to name names. You don't have to go into dramatic semantics, but just generally people's reactions to your own shifts on both the positive and, and negative side to, to, to you know illustrate the point you were just making. Well, I was going to go into that before you went into that unnecessary spiel, but okay. Um, yeah, um, I mean, I've had, obviously, my mother and, you know, people on, you know, I've had, I'm not going to say names, but, you know, I've had, you know, half of my family be very supportive of me and, you know, be in my corner when it comes to, you know, the shifts I've gone through and, you know, becoming the individual that I am and then, you know, I've had, I wouldn't really call them family, and I wouldn't even really call them friends, you know, because family and friends don't act that way towards you. They don't treat you like dirt when you decide to be who you are, you know. If anything, they're not family, and they're certainly not friends if they want to, you know, plunge a knife into your back and say, screw you, you're not allowed to be that way. You need to be that little domineering, control, controllable, you know, predictable piece of crap that we always knew you were, you know. You've got to be that. You can't be confident. You can't be smart. You know, anybody who treats you like that, they're not family. They're not friends. They're not, you know, 
if anything, they're traitors. You know, if if they're willing to to sabotage you for their own personal benefit, they're traitors. You know, they're they're not. That's not a quality human being. That's less than a human being. That's subhuman. That's not okay at any level. It's not right. You know, you can't treat your fellow man like garbage just for your own personal benefit. That's a globalist move. That's not. You know, that's not with integrity, that's lacking honor, that's lacking courage, that's lacking commitment, that's not, you know, there's nothing honorable about that. And frankly, you know, the people who have done that to me, you know, I, you know, I want nothing to do with that, you know. I don't want anything to do with that, I don't want, you know, I don't want to be associated with that in any way, shape, or form. And I'm perfectly happy not being associated with that, you know. People who want to plunge a knife into my back and push me under the bus are just okay with it, you know. If that's their attitude on life, that's pretty pathetic, and it's pretty sad, and it's immature, you know. And they should be the ones to be pitied, you know. And those are the people that you have to feel sorry for because they themselves are small people and, you know, don't have much if all they can do is trample on others just to make themselves feel better, you know. And no matter how much material possessions or what you have or, you know, whatever is going to change that fact, you know. If you're a legitimate human being and you're honest and you're good, you don't do that to people. Even if you don't like somebody, you don't do that, you know. You have a right not to like somebody, you have a right to not associate yourself with someone, but, you know, you don't treat them less than human just because you don't like them. You just say, hey, I don't want to associate with you just for some personal reasons. It's nothing personal. And, you know, okay, all is well, you know. As humans, we have rights to like and dislike and associate with who we want, you know. But it's not cool, you know, period to stab people in the back just just because they're growing and maturing and, you know, becoming stronger individuals. It's not okay to, you know, plunge the metaphorical dagger into their back and say, screw you, you can't do that. That's, you know, that's evil and psychotic and you, you just can't do that, you know. You can't be genuine. You can't, you know, you can't emotionally, you know, expound yourself. You're not allowed to do that. That's against the law, you know, etc. You know, you just people who pull that kind of stuff at, at any level, and it, and it happens all the time, you know, not just in my life personally, but it happens to lots of people. You know, people who do that, you know, there's no point in wasting time with those people who are associating or, you know, anything. But the people you want to be around are the people who stick around. And the people that stick around are the ones that are always going to be there. And it's events like these that just kind of show, and not only have shown me, but probably have shown a lot of other people out there. It's like separating wheat from chaff, you know. There's all of the genuine people that have integrity that support you for who you are and what you are. And then there's those that unfriend you and, you know, block you and send nasty notes to you on Facebook and whatever else that, you know, just show their true colors and show what they really are. And you just look at it and you shake your head and it's like, yeah, okay, that's fine. <laughs> and, you know, you just respect their right to be what they are and just, you know, let them do their thing and temper tantrum and whatever and just, you know, don't associate yourself. And that's pretty much what I do and I have no real regrets, and I don't look back at it, and, you know, I don't really see how the way I've acted is psychotic or wrong or evil, you know, I, I just don't, I don't get it, you know, and I think it's just really selfish for people who feel that their emotional needs are more important or better than the emotional needs of someone else, that's just not okay, that's not equality, that's not you know, it's not fair to, you know, place yourself above others and say, fuck you, you can't feel that way, but I can because 
I'm entitled, I'm God, I'm allowed to feel however the hell I want, but if you feel a certain way that I don't like, you're an evil person and you just need to go die. You yeah. know, that's, that's just like the total antithesis of freedom. That's the total antithesis of, you know, the constitutional system we live in and, you know, I don't want to be associated with, with anything that is in complete and direct violation of that. You know, I've given my own personal oath to freedom. I've given my own personal oath to the Constitution. I've given my own personal oath to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And I'm not going to associate with people that, you know, violate those premises. I'm just not, you know. And if people have a problem with it, fine. You know, that's their right. That's their constitutional right to feel how they want to feel. But, you know, for me personally and for my personal health, I'm, you know, I'm a happy person. You know, I'm just living my life to the fullest that I can and doing what I can. And, you know, life moves on regardless of whether or not people like you or dislike you. And that's just, that's just the way it is, you know. But you just got to, even, even if, you know, I, I would rather have every person on the planet dislike me because I am who I am than, you know, live some fake false lie and have everybody not genuinely like me but pretend to like me just because I'm living their deluded fantasies. You know, oh man, and... It's like from the movie Men in Black 3, uh, the, the time traveler, Griffin, I think, was his name. Yeah, it was Griffin. He was like, yeah, you haven't seen Men in Black 3. You have to watch that, Dave. It's a good one. Uh, you want to I, talk I, about I, I, have, I have seen it. I just don't recall specific names. It's uh, the Arcalian. Remember, uh, they call well, you know, they call it a time jump for a reason. I've seen Men in Black three. <laughs> yeah, I've got it on DVD. I've seen it multiple times. I've watched it in theaters. Uh, got man, what was his name? Um, had the, had this had that you know beanie cap thing on, and you know wore the kind of dorky looking jacket, and you know. Kind of looked like you a little bit, only with a little bit of a younger face. Um, I don't remember names on that, so... God, what was his name? Swart was Griffin. Swart was Griffin. He was a... Uh, uh, this right. Men in black. Three. Right. Yep, Griffin. Yep. But anyway, it was the alien Griffin who had the ARCnet, and he said when he was at uh, Cape Canaveral in Florida, you know, he's like, you know, Telling the most bitter truth is better than saying the sweetest lie, you know, and that is so true, you know, whether it's some sci-fi comedy or, you know, that applies directly to reality. Saying the most bitter truth is better than the sweetest lie, you know, you got, you got to, at some point you just got to be honest and you got to be forthcoming because keeping a perpetual lie going is not healthy, it's not, it's not holding integrity. And people wonder why, you know, there's such an out-of-control medical epidemic in this country. It's because so many people live in this false fantasy, you know, trying to appease and please everybody else around them, but at the same time sacrificing their own health by maintaining that stress of keeping up the lie, you know. And it's kind of like the old biblical story, you know, I grew up watching this Veggie Tales as a kid, and it described lies as these giant monsters, these giant purple monsters that just grew every time you lied, and the weight would just kind of bear down on you, and you'd get heavier. Well, that is true. That's metaphorically true. That's what lies do to you. You know, they build up on the inside to the point where you just feel like you're going to burst, you know. 
and you feel like you're not yourself, you're just living this deluded, not true reality, you know, you're sacrificing your own personal integrity just to maintain some false illusion, you know, that isn't really keeping other people happy, it's just making other people act as if though they're happy, even though they're not, you know. So you might as well tell the truth because, you know, whether people like it or not, you know, the truth is better than a lie because at least once the truth is out there, people over time can deal with that truth and people can, you know, classify it where it needs to be classified and deal with the information firsthand as to where if you keep lying, nothing really goes anywhere and you're just in this perpetual loop, you know, and... Then you have to tell more lies to cover up the lies, and then more lies to cover up those lies, and it eventually just collapses in on itself like a house of cards. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And, you know, that's kind of my personal take on it. You know, I'm just, it's, I'm with who I want to be with right now, and the people I don't want to be with have exited my reality for the time being. And I'm fine with that, you know. They made their choices, I've made mine, and we're square, you know. But it still doesn't change anything, you know. Um, I mean, there's one family member in particular that, you know, I still love and care about, even though they don't really feel the same about me. I don't know if they do or not, but, you know. You know, they think I'm going down some dark path, and I'm not, and, you know, I respect their right to feel that way and be, <clears throat> well, on that truth, but, you know. Based on what I've been told about that individual and presuming that my information is correct, um, they seem to view you as incapable of critical thinking and intelligence, so therefore, in their paradigm, if um, you appear to be thinking critically or appear to be acting intelligently, then it must mean that somebody else who is highly intelligent must be manipulating you towards some nefarious agenda. And of course, with the person in question, I have kind of been directly labeled by them as the poster child for that. Like. Oh, look at what Dave's doing with all this paradigm shift stuff. He seems like a really intelligent guy. Well, because I know Rich is just a freaking moron, Dave must be a CIA agent, like, PSYOP person who has targeted Rich and is, is puppeting him because Rich has been making all of these wise, positive actions and they're intelligent actions, and there's no way he could do that by himself. So he must be being fed instructions by a higher power who is tricking Rich into thinking that he's benevolent when really he's setting setting him up to be the next, you know, Sandy Hook shooter or whatever, and it was like some really really paranoid, um, you know, rants that this person went on in. You know, I know in, in an older paradigm, I'd have been, like, butthurt and how dare that person and blah, blah, blah. But now I'm just laughing, like, okay, well, if they want to be that paranoid, cool, that's their problem, that's not mine. But I, I just kind of thought it was funny. And, like, you know, I've noticed that with, with, you know, myself in the past and, you know, a lot of people in their past, I've noticed that, if others around them have this view of them that, you know, oh, that person's stupid and limited and incapable and blah, 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 and they and that person starts to rise up in their level of intelligence and, and awareness and wisdom and so on and so forth, those around them that have this lower view of them automatically think, well, they're not capable of that, therefore somebody must be manipulating them and trying to take advantage of them. So they look around. Who around them is highly intelligent that, that's probably up to no good? Oh, it's that person. Yeah, that, that person's manipulating them. So then all these like crazy theories about that, that person start coming up and it just, you know, creates a lot of drama. Although in our case, there was no drama created because I'm just sitting here laughing like whatever. You're just sitting there laughing like whatever. So there's no conflict. Yeah, exactly, you know, 
and I respect that person's right to feel that way, and they're allowed to feel that way, and, you know, that's fine. I'm just letting time be the ultimate master on it, and just laying back and playing cool, and, you know. And I love that particular person, you know, because they're important to me. They've been an important part of my life since I was a baby, you know. <laughs> and I want what's best for them, and, you know, I would like to still have a relationship with them if they're ever willing in the future to be mature enough to pursue that regardless of belief systems and, you know, whatever else, you know. That doesn't mean there can't be a relationship, and I've tried to explain it to them, but, you know, whether or not they, you know, want to be mature and, you know, be in a relationship is up to them. You know, other I can't... Than that, any, 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 any of the other family members in particular who, well, they, like I said, not family members, but, you know, any of those other people, I just, you know, yeah. They're out of my reality, and that's that. But, you know. Yeah, I can't give all the all the personal details of this because it's private information. But I know that you know in recent times, um, Katerina has told me about something that she's been going through. Whereas in the past, a few years ago, there are certain people who I won't name that had this view of Katerina as oh. She's this little, unstable, incapable, neurotic girl that, you know, is easily controlled and manipulated, and that's Katarina, and that's who she is, and that's who she'll always be. And now as she's risen up into this more aware and empowered state, these people in question are getting really mad at her for it. They have this attitude of, like, how dare you be something greater than than what our ego's assumptions have pegged you as. How dare you contradict us? You know, how how dare you be something better than what we always assumed you could be? How dare you? You you are not staying in your place that we expected you to stay in. You're being naughty, you're contradicting us, you're you're being empowered when our view of you is that you always have to be disempowered. Now you're being empowered, so you're being naughty by, by contradicting us. And, you know, there are, again, you know, people who I will not mention because it's personal information, but, you know, just I'll just say there are some people in Katarina's reality right now who are reacting like this towards her and, she was talking to me about it. We were both kind of laughing about it a bit, and then it's just, it's it's amazing, and it is a part of the the societal meme, to where like you know, people are just like you know, totally underestimating you, and then you're just like, oh well, I'll show them, and then as soon as you try to take a little bit of initiative, it's almost like you know nothing's ever good enough. Like oh, how dare you do that? And, then they're attacking you from another angle and then pushing you back down and then they're kind of happy again because they, they got you pushed back down to where they want you. But then as soon as you rise up and you keep rising up and you don't stop rising up, then those people, they, they don't want to deal with you anymore. They shun you and they snub you and they talk crap about you and, and how how dare them. So, um, and so you know... I don't know how much of that you heard, Rich, because I know you walked away. Oh, I just came back, so... <laughs> yeah, I was just explaining how um, there are people in in Katarina's life who had this idea of her to where she's this helpless, neurotic little girl at, with, you know, no capability, and that's the way she is, and that's the way she'll always be, and that's the way she has to stay... And because she's risen way up out of that, now these people are angry with her. How dare you contradict us? How dare you be something more than what we have assumed that you can be? How you know? How dare you go against what we have defined you as? How dare you become more empowered? How dare you become self-confident? How dare you exit our paradigm view of you? And so her and I were kind of kind of laughing about you know about these people because it's a common societal thing, 
you know, I think with most people, everybody has that or has had that group of people in their life that, you know, were telling them, oh, you're not good enough, <clears throat> you'll never be this, you need to straighten up, you need to do right. And then as you start doing right, then they, they approach you from another angle and they shoot you down because really what they want is to just keep you in that perpetual state of telling you you're worthless, you're worthless, you're worthless, because then they feel that they can maintain this control over you. And as soon as you manage to rise above it, and then they try to attack you to push you back down, but then they fail, and you keep rising up, rising up, rising up. They get really, really fucking irately pissed, and it comes to a point where now they want nothing to do with you. It's like, well, f well, fuck you. I don't, you know, you're you're defying my view of you. So fuck you. You're horrible. Get out of here. And there's just there's been some people doing that to Katarina. Um, I've had that happen to me. You've obviously been going through that sort of thing, and. I think it's a very a very common thing within society because when people I think when people are telling you oh you're doing everything wrong and you need to do this right and you need to do this right and you need to be smarter and you, you need to improve yourself why aren't you going out and improving yourself and being responsible it's like that's not really what they want you to do they just they want to be able to keep telling you that and ragging on you about that forever and ever amen because it gives them a sense of control over you, like, yeah, they've got you where, where they want you. So as long as they can keep telling you that you're not doing the right thing, they've got this control hold, so then they feel safe with you. But as soon as you actually start taking their advice, and you do start improving yourself, and you do start excelling, and you do start getting smarter and wiser and, and, and more productive, they freak the fuck out, because now it's like, oh shit, what if they rise above my level of awareness? Then they're going to have something over me. They might be able to control me. Oh no, they're a threat now. I can't deal with them anymore because I have to protect myself from that potential threat. It's a very common thing. And, you know, I respect those people's rights to feel that way, but I benevolently say, fuck them. You know, that you don't need people like that in your life. And those people will automatically drift away if you let them. If you don't fight them and you respect their right to think just totally horribly of you and you're like, okay, cool, I respect your opinion, then you will just be insufferable to them and they won't want to deal with you and the garbage will then take itself out. No drama, no stress, no battle, no war. I've And I've noticed that in my life and Katerina's life and your life, a lot of people that they decide to make that and that shift of just respecting other people's rights to be that little grumpy kitty hater, that the garbage just kind of peacefully takes itself out. And that it's only when we try to fight it and grab onto it and go, no, you can't talk that way about me. Get back here. You have to remain in my reality on my terms. Then, you know, it's like I said, no one can energetically vampire you unless you are also vampiring them. It's a it's a circle. It's a cycle. It's a, it's a symbiotic, neurotic relationship. <laughs> Exactly. It, it is. It really is, you know. If you disrespect <laughs> the hater's right to hate, you know, how can they really do anything, you know? They see me rolling, they be hating, and it's just like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> hater's gonna hate. And then they, uh, they want to have a dialogue. <laughs> yes, they want to have a dialogue. A major dialogue, a William Black dialogue, a William Wesley Crouch dialogue. Mm -hmm. I uh, want to have a dialogue. Call uh, 1 800 uh, Commodore 64 uh, and Windows tech support. Yeah. I'm William Black. I can install Windows on a Commodore 64. If you Control don't agree freak. with me, shut up. Control freaks can be fun if you let them be. Uh -huh. They really can. Hey, that's, a, that's all I do to combat the trolls. I just respect their right to be trolls and like, all right, cool. And they're like, you can't say that. Shut up. <laughs> You're supposed to fight me. Why are you saying, okay, cool? You're not allowed to do that. What's your problem? Uh -huh. 
Yeah. Looks like we got some people watching live, too. Even though it's like freaking, you know, almost 3.30 in the morning central time. Well, yeah, we got more views than what we had yesterday. <laughs> How many people are watching? Nah, just a few. Nothing major. But then again, I also don't completely trust YouTube's stats because it always undershoots. I really think that, you know, if it says you've got 100 views, you've probably got 1,000. If it says you've got 5 viewers, you probably really got like 15. YouTube has a tendency of lying in its statistics because that's a corporation that's divided against itself too. You've got the part of YouTube that wants you to empower yourself, and then you've got the freaking globalist part of YouTube that wants to just totally fuck with you, so... Every corporation has its its infighting, you know what I mean? Kind of like, um, you know, the middle management fights itself because they don't want to get, you know, knocked off by anyone in upper management, and so they see the lower peon level as a threat because they don't want anybody rising up to middle management and knocking anybody out of there, and like... And corporations are just like an internal war with itself, which, you know, is why the larger a corporation is, it becomes more and more dysfunctional and really unable to perform what even it is setting out to do. Whether it's setting out to, to help you or setting out to fucking globalistly screw you in the ass, it, it becomes increasingly inefficient in doing what it's doing the larger it gets because all the different parts of the corporation start to factionize against each other because, you know, they, they that's why they call it climbing the corporate ladder. You know, what's that about? Kicking everybody else off the ladder as you go up and, you know, sending them straight back to the bottom. So that's, you know, the internal corporate struggle, it, the corporation against itself. So <laughs> it's pretty interesting. Uh -huh. Yep, it is, it is. <clears throat> yeah, what else do you talk about? And yes, my viewers, this is tobacco, not wacky tobacco. I went over that earlier. No, <laughs> oh, that's weird. <laughs> You're smoking marijuana. Yeah, preferably, man. Prefer, preferably, I prefer, and I have them right here, but black and mild jazz. And no, kids, if there are any kids watching, I am not pushing black and mild jazz cigars. Believe me, I'm not. That's just what I prefer to smoke. Because I smell like vanilla. Yeah. And they have a nice good aroma and they are easy. And smooth. Ah, here we go. I, th I thought I, I thought I still had this. <laughs> Evidence. <laughs> Bugler. Bugler. Yeah, I know. I know. Like um, the time before last, when I when I went to get some tobacco, and um, they were out of Bugler, and all they had was Tops. Um, that's that's another brand of tobacco. That stuff like smokes down real quick, and it tastes like shit, and it's garbage. And that's the last time I'm buying that. Um, this stuff's actually pretty decent. Again, not advocating smoking or anything. I'm just saying that's personally what I smoke because it's natural tobacco and it's not laced with 10,000 chemicals and you know so on and so on so I'm not advocating anybody like start a nicotine habit or anything so yes kids don't smoke stay off cigarettes and you know don't don't do crack do cocaine it's a cleaner cut no, I'm just kidding um, <laughs> But yeah. <laughs> Still there, Rich? Uh-huh. And I'm playing Orbital Space Simulator right now. 
Uh, hmm. Is there any way you could actually put that into screen share mode to show us what you're doing? I know you've actually got like a two monitor setup, but I don't know how that works with the Hangout. Because I don't have two monitors on one computer, so I don't actually know how that would work. Oh, it's interesting, really. I mean, I've got I've, I've got you on this screen that I'm staring at right now. I've got the yeah. Hangout in a full screen tab. That's pretty kick-ass. And but but if you enable stuff. your screen share, does it yeah, like does it let you select the screen from the other screen, yes, or does it, it does. stay? It does. Yes. Okay, so try... Oh, yes, yes. There it is, there it is. So I can get into some sunlight here. Time warping it a little bit. What planet is that supposed to be? It's the one we're on right now. Uh, well, I don't know if this thing goes galactic or what. I mean, it does all of the planets in the solar system. It's not quite so advanced where it does, you know. Um, and I already showed it's Orbiter 2010. I already showed it to you quite a while ago. Um, I mean, it's it's a free software type deal, you know, download it yeah. and play it. But, um, yeah, it's a pretty cool setup. I mean, it doesn't just have one spacecraft either, you know, you can select from multiple other spacecraft, like this one, this one's on the moon, obviously. Obviously. since deorbited in 2001, but they, the developers were cool enough to give Mira a more stable orbit, so that way it wouldn't do that. <laughs> and, of course, everybody recognizes the famous... International Space Station. Yeah, with fucked up graphics, because it's actually a lot more intricate than this. Why it looks like this, I don't know. It's supposed to be better looking than that. Maybe the <laughs> graphics decide to have a little heart attack or something, I don't know. But anyway, it's supposed to be a little bit more accurate than that. That just kind of looks like a cartoonish version of it. I don't know what... Yep, I guess that's the ISS in this map. It's pretty pathetic, I know. <laughs> let me find a better let me find a better example. <laughs> we'll find a better freaking example of that. That was pathetic. Special Atlantis Dock to let's try this. There we go. That is what it should look like. Yes, that is better. Yeah, the graphics don't look like they're having a heart attack, and it doesn't look like something out of a Charlie Hebdo comic. 
Space shuttle at Atlantis. Yes, you can fly the space shuttle. There's even add-ons where you can fly the Apollo spacecraft. You can fly Soyuz. You can fly a whole bunch of sci-fi stuff. Um, there's just the possibilities are endless. Unfortunately, I think the graphics development team has been dead for a while. It's more focused on real spacecraft than anything. I think the game has potential. It's not like Star Trek Online or anything. Even though Star Trek Online is kind of cheesy. Yeah. Just that's the way out. But yeah, that's over to twenty ten. It's it's pretty cool. It's a fun game. A lot of cool stuff you can do. You can deploy satellites with the shuttle, you can launch the Hubble Space Telescope. Heck I can even do a shuttle launch demonstration. It's pretty cool. Right into space. Kind of a technical process, but And if people are still here, I thank you for your patience, as some people might find this extremely boring, extremely stupid, and who gives a fuck about it, but I think it's fun, and I think it's cool, and it's whatever, you know, whatever, whatever floats your boat, you know. Well, as long as we're taking a quick break to show fun, cool stuff, um, I think we'll take a break to show people how to install Windows 95 on a Commodore 64. No, just, just, um, here, here, here you go, man. This right here, this is a um, this is a, a music composition software that I that I use from time to time. It's pretty cool. It's open MPT. It's a Windows software, and I'm running Linux, so I may as well demonstrate how to install Windows shit on Linux, seeing as that is totally possible. Some things are easier to uh, to do with it than others. But this particular program tends to be extremely easy. So I'm just going to do that right quick. Do ba -da -ba -da. I show Atlantis on the launch pad. Ready to go. Okay, weird. I should be in screen share mode, and I'm not. What the hell happened? Of the Atlantis cockpit. It's got a full cockpit display. There we go. Are you able to see my screen now? Hold on just a second. Yes, I am. Okay. Yeah. Because I engaged screen share mode and then it like kicked out for some reason. I'm like, what? So, anyway. Um, I'm running Linux, and I'm going to install a Windows program onto Linux. And now I'm igniting the main engines on Space Shuttle Atlantis, preparing for launch. We're you can ready. see you can you can you can see all this, right? Yeah, it's on my I mean I, I don't I don't I don't know I don't know how the hangout is going to record this, if it's going to prioritize your view over mine or mine over yours or uh, whatever it's going to do, but um I am uh showing how to install a piece of Windows software onto Linux. Just gonna give that a second. It's just updating the configuration and then it'll go into the mod plug installer. Well we're already punching through the stratosphere. Well, from what I've noticed on Google Hangouts, it tends to prioritize display by who's speaking 
that's generally how it tends to work. Yeah, typically. Okay, punching through the stratosphere, main engine's looking good. Okay, okay. Space okay, check it out. Rich, can you see this? Yeah. Yeah, I okay, got it on so, the screen. I okay, cool. It. So you, you so you see this as a Windows uh, program, C drive program file, so on and so forth. So I am running through the install here, create a do 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 make sure all the stuff is checked that needs to be checked. There's all the formats it can support, all the different music formats. I've played you some of these before. And it's extremely cool. Um, so moving on, installing, and um, okay, launch. And it put a little shortcut on the desktop there, and it also put one in the program files and all that shit. Okay. Um, and booster separation is about to commence, and. SRB separation, eminent SRB set. There go the SRB solid rocket boosters. They are falling back towards the Earth. Now we press to Miko. Miko, for anybody who doesn't know, means main engine cutoff. Hey, Rich, can you see this? Dave, how many times do I have to tell you I have it on the other screen? I'm doing. I've got two. I've got two screens going here. Well, I don't know if you're. I don't know if you're paying. I don't know if you're paying attention anymore. Just because it's on your screen doesn't necessarily mean anything. Um, so obviously, this program does come with um, does come with some some sample files here. Um, okay. Well, this is there. We go. Um, the see where it says example songs. There's a, a it, it gives you a bunch of different um, you know just sample songs within you know various formats and stuff. So let's see. Um, now, in order f to be able to hear this, I'm going to have to unplug my headphones. So I'm gonna do that. And here we go. Can you hear that okay? Uh-huh. Is that not fucking cool? That's kick ass. Okay, let's try a different one. Um... Well then, let's try this. And, um, of course, we can, you know, export as MIDI, export as lossy MP3, export as Waver FLAC, compatibility export, save as template, save as, we got all the different, you know, um, well, actually, I guess this is set for XM, but, you know, you can change the settings to export as different stuff, append module, open template, blah, 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 new IT XMS 3M mod, open MPT module, da, da, da. Um, let's see here. This is a, a very full function software. It's pretty sweet.
MO3 means module where the samples are encoded in um, MP3 format to make the file even smaller. Obviously, mod files are pretty small to begin with, but you can um, make them even smaller that way. Okay, um, okay I'm going to exit the program there. So. So what'd you think of that? That's pretty cool. I mean, I'm paying attention the best I can, but I gotta kind of make sure that my orbit isn't completely degrading to shit. Even though I don't know if that. <laughs> sometimes flying this, flying the space shuttle is one of the hardest things to fly in this because the orbital parameters of the space shuttle are so freaking sensitive that if you, you know undershoot or overshoot, you can fuck up your orbit completely and you're fucked regardless of what you try to do, you're screwed. The little orbital, the little ohms engines or orbital maneuvering system, for those who don't know the lingo, aren't going to save your ass. You just kind of end up burning up in the atmosphere and there's just really no help in helping you, you know, not even the queen can save you, it's just kind of you're fucked, it's screwed, it's over, you're dead, good luck. <laughs> Now, the thing about module formats with the music is it's kind of um, bring your own wavetable. So, like, the, the positives on that is that you're not, like, enslaved to, to the limits of your of what might be on your sound card for MIDI. But, you know, the, the con is that obviously you have to bring your own samples. Well, at least on the plus side... Every song that you can you can download from it, you can open it up in that editor, and uh, you know you can take the samples that are in there, and you can ex extract them to individual files and start creating a little database for yourself. Um, you can there's also tons of samples you can download online. I mean, I've got something like four gigs worth of samples, like tens of thousands of samples that I've collected over the years, and it's it's really flexible, and you can kind of you know just just do what you want. So. It doesn't have that instant gratification to where everything's already there, but it does have that freedom and, and flexibility that you can do whatever the hell you want. So, and that's you know I think that's kind of like the paradigms we're facing you know within society right now too, because you know a lot of people they want freedom and um, they have no idea what it is. I mean, like what they want the freedom to be babysat better. <laughs> You know, it's like you got these people that are like, I want freedom, I don't want slavery. Yet they're still trying to bitch to their to their politicians instead of taking, you know, responsibility for themselves. And they still want a babysitter to do everything for them. But freedom is where you have that willingness to take responsibility and and educate yourself and learn right from wrong and to conduct yourself with with integrity and take responsibility for your own actions and be willing to learn from your fuck ups and failures and you know use that as a springboard to evolve you instead of whining and going oh poor little me you know I didn't do it right the first time and that makes me horrible and blah 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 when really Einstein said anyone who's who's never made a, made a mistake has never tried anything new uh -huh. I mean, even even discussions, you know, like this help, you know, raise consciousness through social media. Like, anybody who's interested in space stuff, like, this is a space simulator. And, like, if they didn't know that sort of thing exists, now they do. You're sharing that information. That is a free download, isn't it? You were telling me it's, it's yes. completely free. Yeah, Orbiter 2010. Orbiter 2010 is completely free, and I'm compl almost at uh, my collapse. I'm trying to align my orbit, and ironically, being in alignment with myself, this is probably the most perfect orbit I've made, or most perfect orbital setup I've made with the shuttle, like, ever. This is, like, the first time I've actually been this perfect on the dot with it, <laughs> like, actually pressing perfectly. I haven't separated from my main tank yet. I've been... Yeah. Trying to, uh, you know, 
calculate my direction. So if people do a Google search for Orbiter 2010, that'll pop up just right there, and they can go ahead and download that, install that. Yeah. Of course, be aware. Obviously, obviously it'll, it'll work if you're running Windows. I have not tried installing it on Win on Linux like I just did with uh, OpenMPT. Maybe one of these days I should try that just for fun, just to see if it'll work. Um, and, yeah, uh, if you do a search for OpenMPT, you know, you could uh, download the, um, you know, the little music program that I was just demonstrating. So, I mean, hey, what if somebody's been looking for a, a full-blown, full-featured music composer and all they've seen is the mainstream advertising for all these programs that are super expensive? You know what I mean? Now they know they can get something for free. And what if they're, they're a Linux user, but they didn't know that Windows programs could be installed on Linux? Well, now they, now they know that. Now it's like, okay, I can even install that under Linux. Cool. You know, so just this, you know, sharing of all this different sort of information helps, you know, use social media to raise consciousness because then people are exposed to things and to ideas that, you know, they might not have been exposed to otherwise. And people are like, oh, well, you know, talking on social media is just stupid. That's not really taking any action or, or you know, any sort of practical application, but it really depends on what you're saying as to whether or not it's practical application or whether it's there just uselessly doing stupid shit. So when you share information that people can use and apply practically, then I think that that sharing is in and of itself a practical application because you're not just sitting there pissing and moaning about what a baby you feel like. Uh -huh. I'm getting very close to getting a good, nice orbit, good solid orbit, and then I will separate from this tank and we'll demonstrate that. Almost there. I'm I mean, I'm sure... I'm sure there are people thinking, I'd love to use really kick-ass, you know, flight simulator software, but it's all Microsoft software, and it's all expensive and costs hundreds of dollars, or, or I wish I could get big, badass music composition software or video editing or whatever, but it's all expensive and blah, 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 because they're in the paradigm that you have to buy everything and nothing's free. And then they run across a video like this, and all of a sudden they're inspired to the idea, wow, some of the, this shit is free. Then it might make them curious. What else is out there that's for free? These programs that these guys are talking about can't be, you know, the only few little programs out there that are free. There's got to be more. There's got to be a lot more. And then it, it inspires people's curiosity to search for it instead of just sitting there feeling sorry for themselves and going, I'm not even going to bother looking because all programs are pay because that's my paradigm and that's the only real reality. So fuck anyone who says otherwise. Um, yeah, absolutely. Okay, we're about to do main tank separation here in three, two, one. Tank separated. There goes the main external tank. It is falling away from the shuttle now. We are free. And features of this shuttle get cooler and cooler as time goes on. Rotate a little bit using our RCS system. And yet again, another buzzword that people may or may not know, meaning a reaction control system. It is designed specifically so that way the shuttle can maneuver in orbit along with the Ohms engines, and again, the Ohms engines are the orbital maneuvering system, which help, can help properly place it in the orbit, depending. I've obviously done so damn well with the main engines that I've placed myself into a very, very good orbit. It's nice and even and high and, you know, just perfectly around the Earth. Not too much variation in altitude. You know what I love? I love people's paradigms to where when you've got really, you know, something really cool that's for free, as soon as you tell them that it's for free, they're like, what's the scam? It's free, so it must be a scam. But then when somebody comes and actually scams them and wants to sell them some piece of shit for exuberant amounts of money, they're like, well, it's really expensive, so it must be legit. 
it must be good. Because if it's a lot of money, it must be good. It must be real. But if something's free, then it's obviously a scam. And it makes no fucking yeah. sense because yeah. isn't the idea of a scam someone trying to steal from you? So if somebody's giving you something for free, that's giving, that's not stealing. But if someone's trying to rape you under the coals for a lot of money, isn't that stealing? So people totally have their paradigms backwards on that. We're currently moving away from the tank. I can barely see it off in the distance, just a tiny little orange speck now. Got the orbital maneuvering system, ohms engines burning, pushing us to a faster velocity. Yeah. Sometimes people tell me, how can Linux be a free operating system? Uh, how, how can something like that be free if no one's paying for it? And I'm like, um, do you get charged to type in a Google search? No. Have you ever been charged to listen to AM and FM radio? No. Have you ever been charged to, uh, you know, watch broadcast television? No. Yet yeah, these are all multi-billion dollar industries, aren't they? Yeah. Well, why aren't they scams? You're not paying for them. Uh, and they're like, I never thought about it like that. It's because people usually don't think at all. They just react based on their programming. And they uh, defend their programming. My programming's right. I don't want to hear anything different. Shut up. Fuck you. I'm right. You're wrong. Go away. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. People tend to do that, for sure, for sure. And the heads-up display is pretty cool. You can see I've got a little map right here, and I can do an automatic tracking. It shows daylight. I'm all already heading into the Earth's shadow. You can see where the home port of Cape Canaveral is. All mm -hmm. the different tracking stations around the globe. It shows my current orbital reference around the Earth. Just shut down my ohms engines, and now I'm going to begin the process of opening up the payload bay doors. Got to enable the power system first. Release the latches. They are released, and the doors are beginning their opening process right as we speak. The beauty of this thing is that it's all for free. It's all for free. You know, most people would look at something like this and go, oh, bullshit, you paid $250 just for the basics of this. And, it's, and the thing is, even with Microsoft Flight Simulator X, what most people don't realize is my setup that I got, you know, just the games themselves, we're not even talking with professional-grade flight, you know, sticks and all that stuff. I mean, people make these professional aircraft grade setups that cost thousands of, you know, thousands of dollars, but the basic game itself, just getting started with the add-ons and everything else is, you know, less than, you know, 40 bucks, less, less than 50 bucks, you know, depending on what you get. Even the FSX Gold version is you know, well under 50 bucks now, it's, you know, 43.99, and, you know, the game is super cheap, you know, you'd be paying 40 bucks for top-level, you know, flight sim software. 
And it is the standard by which pilots swear by other pilots all around the world that fly on Microsoft Flight Simulator X. It was developed for pilots, pretty much by pilots. So, you know, don't let the name Microsoft fool you on that one. It is good software, and it does, you know, it was developed top-notch. <clears throat> You know, there's something that um, I've never really, like, given a clear demonstration of that um, I would like to show at the moment, so I'm in screen share mode. I know I have mentioned, um, you know, my, my, my glass um, home office desk and how I have it decked out with, like, LED lighting and stuff, and sometimes you'll notice a little bit of a blue reflection off my face and all that. But I just, I while you were talking there about what you were doing, I was videoing, you know, what it looks like with my little, you know, flip video cam, and um, I just wanted to play that through right quick, just so you and others could, could kind of see what this looks like. It's really cool. Can you see that? Uh-huh. Clear as day. And there's what you were doing up there with the simulator. So I recorded that so people could see, you know, they could, they could understand where my, the monitor screen was relative to everything else. Now I'm up under the desk and looking into the computer case a bit. Beautiful sunset. So there's in, there's there's inside of the I'm trying to show people here there's inside of the computer case and you know it's just this awesome blue LED um, glass desk sort of thing I know video really doesn't do it justice um, seeing it in in person is obviously a lot better but um, you know. I just wanted to kind of show this off a little bit because I talk about it sometimes, but I've never really, like, you know, taken the time to really, like, show it. So what'd you think of that? Yeah, that was cool. Yeah, that's all powered by the computer, by the way. Because these LEDs are technically made to go around on the inside of the computer case. But what I did is um, there's a couple of, of rubber grommet ports on the back of the computer. And I, I just slipped them out through there and just e extended them up and around the, the side and front and, and back of the, uh, the desk kind of aligning them on there. And it, it just looks really cool. So obviously, if this computer's turned off, those lights are not on because it's this computer that's powering that lighting system. So this isn't something that's you know plugged into a wall using you know like a regular wall outlet sort of thing. This actually gets its power from the computer itself. <laughs> I've never seen anybody like do that in quite this way. To have a glass desk and then have the LEDs extending actually out of the computer and around that. I'm not saying nobody has done it. I'm just saying I personally have never seen it. Uh -huh. Still beautiful, reminiscent glow of the sunset. Slowly but surely dimming away as the shuttle heads deeper into the dark side of the Earth. According 
into the map. I am currently over the South Atlantic heading towards... Oh, God. This is totally synchronistic. Not only was it a kick-ass orbit because I was in alignment with myself, guess where I'm headed next? Hmm. South Africa. <laughs> let's all dance. Let, let, let's all dance the disco. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in the space shuttle. I'm heading towards South. Well, this is Atlantis, so it's not disco, but it's. Well, say hello to Michael Tellinger while you're there. Yeah. <laughs> oh. I guess our viewers got bored with your with your flight sim because um, now it's reading at zero viewers. <laughs> oh well. Yeah, okay, yeah, whatever. They can come back and watch it later. I don't care. It doesn't yeah. matter. They want to get bored and be stupid. That's their choice. <laughs> what the fuck? That's gay. Fuck you. You're not talking about anything I'm interested in. So that means you're stupid. Whatever. That's fine. That has care. nothing to do with raising consciousness on social media. You're just sitting there talking about information that can raise consciousness, and you're doing it on social media. What does one have to do with the other? <laughs> you, guys having, you, guys having, you guys are having too much fun. You're not being serious. Fuck you. Yeah, I just like when Vinny Eastwood was tell, telling me that, um, well, he tells this to a lot of people, but he, when I was interviewing him and stuff, and he was telling me that, you know, people like to say I'm unprofessional, but I tell them this. The world is run by professionals. How's that working out for you so far? <laughs> it's like, you know, he's got a good point. Oh, exactly. I'm just sitting here laying back, enjoying life, flying the space shuttle, and just having fun. You know, that's what this, this that's what all PSEC episodes are all about. We do our thing. Yeah, you're, you're, having, you're, 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 you're having fun while paradigm shifting. You can't do that. That's not allowed. You have to be super serious as fucking shit. We have to get serious now. Let's whip out our Excel spreadsheets and turn to page 340 and, and, and read about the... Yeah, whatever. Just fall asleep. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, and another cool thing that I need to I need to show off just because it's oh come on come on now I'll stop sharing I guess for the time being go back to my camera view so I can do this okay live from space .com. This is one kick-ass field that I enjoy. Screen share this, and this is mm. free and available. Looks like J looks like J looks like Jay Larson's online. Oh. I'm going to I'm going to toss him in a nice little chat invite link here. Good. See our and see if he and see, and, and see if he joins us. Yeah, our energetics are doing something for us. Okay, this is the other really cool thing that I enjoy. This is something that's fun to look at and was created by the National Geographic Channel. They did this hour, like two-hour-long thing live from space from the International Space Station a while back, and this was their promo, but it's still active. And it is a live International Space Station tracker. You can literally watch the International Space Station do its thing in orbit, know what the speed is, know where it's at, what country it's in closest proximity to, and it's completely free. Hmm. You can even see its velocity, its altitude. You can see live videos, live feeds, all of that stuff. Interesting. Although I don't know if their live video is enabled, but um, yeah. Hey, we're getting we're, we're getting we're getting viewers we're getting viewers back again. Look at that. 
Oh, cool. They're not completely missing out. Or maybe the YouTube stats are just fucking with us, and there may be a couple of people <laughs> on YouTube saying there was nobody there, but there was, in fact, people watching oh, this whole time. Yeah, yeah, yeah maybe, maybe maybe, YouTube's trolling. They, they do that sometimes. They're a bunch of bastards. Like They're that. like, oh, you're showing free software that's totally kick-ass. Fuck you. We're going to make it look like nobody's watching. Yeah, just, an, just another stupid paradigm. That's why people don't, most people don't know about the free and, and open source softwares and operating systems and stuff because people are thinking that, you know, nothing is free and everything is pay and that if, if something is good, you have to pay lots of money for it and blah, blah, blah. It's like, wait a minute, I don't pay to do Google searches. I don't, uh, I have never paid to listen to AM and FM, you know, broadcast freaking radio. I've never paid to watch broadcast TV. And these are all like multi-billion dollar industries. So like, what the fuck? So if something's a multi-billion dollar industry, they, they can't have free products and services? Really? Since when? <laughs> mm -hmm. no, I just love but it yeah, how um, you know, people are like, if, if, if someone's scamming you for a lot of money on something, really overinflated, price gouging, expensive, oh, it's expensive, so it must be legit. But if something's free, then people are like, oh, it must be a scam. It's like, yeah, that's great logic. Like, if someone's robbing you at gunpoint, then they're not robbing you at gunpoint. But if somebody's not robbing you at gunpoint, then they're robbing you at gunpoint. It's like, wait, what? My brain just shattered. <laughs> mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. See, most people would think you'd need some sort of expensive setup to track the ISS, and it's like, no, you can do that. Uh, there, there are multiple websites you can use to track the ISS, but this one is yeah. the coolest to me because you can make it full screen and the setup is pleasing mm. to the eye. So it's like something that a mission control guy would have all set up. Yeah. And, and then, er and then earlier we were, yeah, and then earlier we were, you know, showing free, you know, flight simulators and, you know, music composition programs and things like that. And, a lot of people are just, they got this paradigm that, oh, you know, that sort of stuff has to be, you know, it has to be pay, you know, if so, uh, something that good has to be expensive, it can't be free, and, you know, that's that's just a total load of crap. Most uh, of the best, thing, best things out there are free downloads, and they're just, they're awesome. And a lot of the pay stuff is, like, really bloated and buggy and shitty, <laughs> so it's, like, one of, one of the ultimate ironies. Mm -hmm. Man, if you want to talk about raising raising consciousness or frickin' social media, I mean, it's just like what you know what we discussed before about you know what what Nixie Pixel is doing and everything. Like she's been she's been going through a lot of shit, and it's like you know here's this girl do, doing Linux and getting sexually harassed and all this other stuff and. She hits a low point, but she uses it as like a springboard to shoot herself way up. And she went from barely making ends meet to making like eight grand a month. And like that was that totally had to do with the paradigm shift because if she had not put her her mind in that position and didn't allow imagination and, and inspiration to take hold, you know, she'd still be just kind of like sitting there broken bitching. But you know, she she allowed her circumstances as a springboard into something like way more positive. You know, people people look at the idea of like you know thoughts and beliefs creating reality is some airy fairy bullshit thing. I'm just like, wait a minute. You know, people didn't walk into a forest one day and discover jet plane trees growing jet planes and you know picking the jet planes off the jet plane trees. Someone had to think, you know, is it possible that something like this might, you know, might be able to exist? And then through that process of imagination and invention and all of that, you know, and over time it, it came to be through human ingenuity. I mean, most everything around us that, that we take for granted came from the non-physical, came from the realm of thought, the realm of belief. If someone didn't imagine it first, do you really think, that, you know, nature is going to, you know, produce LCD monitors and cell phones just of its own accord? No. You think you're going to see, like, semi-trucks growing off of fucking vines and shit? 
No. Uh-huh. Not at all. And yeah, I mean, on the more quantum level, we literally do observe a physical particle reality state, you know, pulled from probability from, uh, from the wave function. But on the less quantum view and more in the 3D tangible sort of view, we can say it's equally true that we use imagination to imagine things that don't exist and then we use our minds to figure out how to then bring that into existence. Otherwise, everything from the homes we live in to the technology we use wouldn't exist because nature would not of its own accord like develop like, you know, plant life that's just gonna, you know, start producing condominiums for no apparent reason. <laughs> you know. So yeah, your thoughts and your belief systems and your emotions and all that, they do matter. They do affect reality. They do affect your choices. They do determine whether or not you're going to empower yourself and accomplish great things or whether or not you're just going to be a shithead and sit there feeling sorry for yourself as the globalists stick their dicks up their your ass and rape you. I mean, the to what you think, feel, and believe totally is a determining factor of what choices you're going to make and therefore what actions you're going to take. Because the facts of any matter are irrelevant because humans never take action on fact. They take action on belief system. You know, it's we humans always act in the direction of what we believe. You know, facts be damned. That's the way humans are. So yeah, when you take action based on a belief system that does have physical knock on wood reality, well knock on glass in this case, knock on glass physical reality consequences that are either going to be productive or destructive. So yeah, we always act in the direction of belief systems first and foremost. So belief systems actually are more relevant than any sort of quote unquote facts about anything. Because those belief systems are always what we act in the direction of. So when we any actions we take, that always has consequences. Always. You take an action, there's going to be a consequence. Guarantee you. Totally guarantee you. So, you know, these sorts of ideas are not just airy-fairy woo-woo. I mean, you know, if being kind to someone is going to inspire someone to become a better person and being a miserable little shit to them is going to, you know, inspire them to go in totally the opposite direction, then obviously that state of being you have and how you interact with that person is going to have a real life, you know, physical, tangible consequence. So it's, it's not just all airy-fairy, woo-woo bullshit. Yeah, the little viewer count on here, the numbers keep changing, going up and down, up and down, up and down. I don't know if that's just, like, YouTube trolling us or if, like, you know, there are people having a hard time maintaining a connection. Maybe their, their Internet's messing up on them right now or something. I don't know. So, anything else we should discuss within the realms of using uh, social media to raise consciousness? I know I personally lately have seen all kinds of cool videos and stuff for shit going on that I wouldn't even know existed without, you know, social media. Like, there's something called a, a Beacon Food Farm in Seattle, or excuse me, Beacon Food Forest, my bad, and they're actually creating a a forest of you know things that are edible and it's just totally free for people to to go in and you know have at it and it's just the idea that you know there doesn't need to be starvation 
you know, we can make it so food is growing everywhere. This would not be hard to do. And like to actually take an idea like that and bring it into reality and actually do it. Even though it's just in one small area in Seattle. That inspires other people to do the same thing. It sets a precedent. They can point to it and go, oh, look what they're doing over there. Maybe we should do that here. And with social media, those ideas can be put on video and can be shot out to TSU and Facebook and Twitter and YouTube and everywhere where people can see it and look at that idea and go, wow, look what they're doing over here. It'd be really cool to do there. And it could just kind of catch on like a meme. I just think it's really cool. So even though there is a lot of lip service and garbage and bullshit on social media, there's also really productive, inspiring things like that. It's just a bunch of people being themselves and just deciding to take it upon themselves to fucking do something. A bunch of people in that community that are like, hey, we're tired of par poverty and starvation. What can we do about this? And if I recall the story correctly, there is this whole plot of land that, um, ironically, the electric company owned. It was just like this grass field that was on property that the electric company owned, but they weren't like directly doing anything with it. It was just a part of, you know, the lot that they that they have. And um, they've actually, you know, got permission to take that land and, and cultivate it. And um, the electric company said, well, if you can get a grant, a money grant to develop this land, then you can go ahead and do that. So then they went through the processes of actually getting the grant, and they got the grant money, and they've been developing on it. It's really cool. Uh -huh. Have you seen anything recently on that talks about like really cool shit like that that people are doing, like really cool, epic, you know, life-changing, fucking badass shit? Oh, you know, oh. other than da other than downfall parodies. Hitler gets angry Sagaline. at the Sagaline. 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 Hitler gets angry at the Beacon Food Forest. No, um. <laughs> But have you, have you seen anything recently? Just any really oh, cool man. epic shit that people are doing? Well, I do think of back about... It's probably been eight months ago, but, you know, people take it, the GoPro revolution, you know, people posting cool videos of them doing cool shit, like free running off of buildings and, you know leaping over stuff and jumping around like ninjas, you know. Uh, one guy in particular that I've been watching for the last couple of years, Chip Corliss. This guy does uh, wing suiting, which is essentially where you have the specially designed suit. Um, you can even Google wing suiting. Jeb, just Google Jeb Corliss. You'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Talking Are you about. talking about like those, squirrels, those flying squirrel suits? Yeah, flying squirrel suits, wing suits, yeah, bird suits. There's multiple different names for them, yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. Those things actually do work. That shit is, like, fucking Yes, they do. Yes, they do. Yeah, they work. I mean, you got to have special yeah. training for it in order to not kill yourself with it, but, I mean, as long as you know how to use the damn thing safely... Those things are real. That's not just something out of out of Hollywood or something. Like that shit exists. All you, to, all, 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 you, all you have to be is a dive master. You don't even really have to. It's not something you really train for. It's just something you do. Jeb Corliss was kind of one of the first to really do it. I mean, it wasn't something that they just all, you know, there's no real training program. You just got to be a really good, confident skydiver. At first, before you start doing, yeah, it's essentially it's essentially taking the principles of flying and making it a man-made thing. You know, it's just a bunch of aerofoils that are 
you know, you got an arrow foil between your legs and you got two arrow foils that are between your arm and your, you know, your hip yeah. and stuff, and you're just gliding through the air like a flying squirrel. So and, it's just, it's a matter of like, you know, you start at the skydiving level and once you understand how that works, then you can actually take those physics and use it to actually fly. So you know you could yeah, well, yeah. like you know you're you could jump off a fucking building with one of these things and extend out and then just be freaking gliding through the city and shit. Mm -hmm. And then of course doing it in a city area have the cops like really annoyed with you that you did it and when you finally land you've got like eight squad cars <laughs> surrounding you. <laughs> you didn't have a permit for that, son. <laughs> what? Is there, is there any way you can show video on here without any sound, without it completely matching or anything? Matching it with anything? Uh, I should, as long as I can find it. No, I mean just like sharing some wingsuit footage. I think I can screen share with it. That's what I'm saying. I mean, as long as you keep it in the, in the small windowed mode, you know, for YouTube, like the default, you know, where you got the window on one side and the related on the other in the comments below, and then you, you know, you play that through with the volume off, then um, um, it shouldn't tag you, especially if it's just someone else's, like, personal video, like, you know, it, a, an individual's taking it upon themselves to take video of somebody using that suit or something. As long as it's not owned by some big, you know, mainstream company or something, then you should be safe. Because the people who do this stuff, you know, I doubt they're working with some big major corporation. It's just people who know how to do it, and so they do it. <laughs> okay. Can you window that? Like, you know, hit the little thing to bring it back to the smaller window? Yeah, yeah, there we go. You know, if YouTube doesn't decide to lag and be a stupid asshole, why don't you bitch? Or why it? don't you send me the link and I'll do it because I don't have those problems. Just send, send me the link on Skype and just I'll fucking do it. Because I'm not going to get any lag. That might be okay. Yeah, it'll be okay now, I think. But yeah, essentially, you know, that's literally what they're doing. And you got to be kind of a confident skydiver to do it, but that's essentially Yeah, obviously. What. And that is Jeb Corliss's video, you know. That's him grinding the crack, and they pretty much do some insane stuff. He's done multiple insane stunts before. This isn't the first the first or last of his amazing feats as a skydiver. That's cool, and he's just like sailing through the frickin' air and shit like a little plane. I didn't really do it with justice without doing it full screen there for a second, yeah. just so you get the idea. Yeah. Must be a bitch to land, though. Well, it, this, and there's the guy holding the balloons, and there he is. And then it'll freeze frame. Bam. That's how close he is to the ground. Yeah, wow. He's probably doing about 250 miles an hour, 300 miles an hour. What are the just, balloons you know, for? What are the balloons for? It's just for it's just for reference, so that way you get the idea of how freaking close he is. <laughs> and then there's the cliff there. And then he pulls the pulls the cord to shoot, and now he's gone parachute. Yeah. So. And that's. I guess there. Uh, I guess there, I guess there, there, there's really no way to. To, to land without use of a parachute. Like, there's no way no. to just kind of, like, glide down to the ground and, 
and do some sort of a landing like that. There's just no fucking way you're coming oh, in too Jeb, fast. Jeb, 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 Jeb's determined to figure out how. He wants to figure out how to be the first man to land himself on the ground. But yeah, currently yeah. the only safe, for real, surefire way is to do it with a square shoot. And that's why I said, you know, to become good at wingsuiting, you have to actually be a master diver. And just to be aware, it's Jeb Corliss. You know, you can look him up. That's him. There he is, smiling and laughing about it. Yeah. Yeah. Good, good shit. Good deal. You know, Jeb Corliss. Yeah. You know. <clears throat> I mean, I imagine if there was a, if there was a way to design design the suit so that you could like just curl up into you know curl up into a ball and the suit is made to protect you all the way around in that position, then as long as you're like landing in an open field, you could just ball up and fucking roll you know along the ground until you're all out of inertia and you just come to a stop. Um. But you would need to be in a big open field for that, so you know you're not like slamming into a tree, because <laughs> that would suck. And it's like rolling on the ground and poof, ugh, game over. <laughs> Ow. And then, and then the and then the other thing that was really inspiring to me was, uh, you know, and of course this made headlines around the world, but you know, uh, Felix Baumgartner. You know, and this has been a couple of years ago, but you know, wasn't there some dude? Versions. Wasn't there some dude who skydived from orbit? Yeah, this was. Well, there was uh, Joe Kittinger. Nobody skydived from orbit per se. Well, I mean, it was like a, a a lower orbit, like lower, but like you could see the curve of the Earth, and you know, it looked like you were, you were out in space. That, they they were yeah they were technically in our outer space they were they weren't at orbital velocity they were just at altitude you know yeah they were in space yeah this yeah is they Felix were they were Baum. floating there this the, the the this is Felix Baumgartner he uh, was the man the first man to ever do a supersonic skydive he literally broke the sound barrier he achieved Mach one. Um, mm -hmm. And he also achieved the altitude record. He broke uh, Joe Kittinger's, uh, Colonel Joe Kittinger's record for the highest free fall ever done. And that record was set back in the late 50s, early 60s. But, um, you know. Uh, let's see. Yeah, you know, and it's like the old post goes, it's sad when an energy drink has a better space program than an entire nation. <laughs> and Red Bull, safe to say right now, has a better space program than our nation. And this is Felix Baumgartner, you know, he's getting ready to jump, there he is, you know. Yeah, and that's exactly what I was talking about. Yep. Yeah, here he is right here, you know, he's getting unstrapped and standing up. He's wearing a Red Bull painted uh, SR-71 flight suit. It's not a high-tech flight suit. Well, it is, but at the same time, it's technology we've had for a long time. How in the hell does he land? That will be answered in the video. He's got a parachute on. Is you know it's so high up that the air resistance is zero. You know, so he's just tumbling around. Mhm. Mm crazy. There he is spinning around like a bat out of hell. <coughs> the vomit comet. <laughs> yeah, if you weren't prepared for that, for sure, for sure. There he is pulling the, the chute. 
That's just kind of the highlights of it, but he did, in fact, break the sound barrier, and he came back safely to the air, you know, for successful uh, landing. And the old guy there with the glasses on, that's Joe Kittinger. You know, he went to Joe Kittinger personally and asked him, you know, hey, how do I accomplish this? <laughs> There's Felix Baumgartner himself, you know. And there's Joe. He's hugging Joe. But yeah, those those are the two. Those are some of the highlights. I mean, the things that I see, you know, that are inspiring and you know, really awesome. You know, just all the technology and science stuff that's currently going on. You know, that that's what inspires me. You know. Even when I'm having a bad week, I can look to that stuff and go, you know, humanity's getting somewhere. Humanity's making something of itself, you know, it's not just all for naught, and, you know, things are going well. So. Yeah, I think I'm going to find the, uh, the Beacon Food Farms here. Uh -huh. Let's see. This on this channel, um, I should be able to get away with some audio on this. Doesn't look like any sort of major corporate bullshit. So let's see here. And I'm going to unplug headphones. Beacon um, Food Forest is a all-volunteer community-run, uh, community-supported urban agricultural project on Beacon Hill. Um, we started about three years ago with uh, thanks to a part of the man and we broke ground this September. We're putting in a bunch of trees and 40,000 square feet of forest bed. And uh, we've got a lot more. And as we speak, we're, we're constructing the upper part as well. But what I really want to start with, uh, what is a food forest? A uh, food forest is a land management system that is modeled after a natural urban ecosystem. So it's an agricultural process of design that's uh, that is inspired and modeled after an ideal urban forest, but we substitute in edible plants and transfer other functions as well as medicinal to crafting and so forth. Uh, we call this companion planting. Uh, the seven layers of the food forest, we have our larger trees up here, our fruits and nuts. These are our climax species. These are the trees that will last the longest. These are the ones we're supporting with other plants around it. The seven other layers, if you move down to dwarf, to shrub, to perennials, herbs, to the rhizosphere that supports the soil, those are all plants and varieties of plants that have specific functions, if not multiple functions, to support the upper story, the final story of our forest. But in the meantime, it functions as a whole forest. Some of the plants will fix the nitrogen, some of the plants attract beneficial insects, some of them are green mulch plants. Um, some of them are human attractors, some are aromatic herbs or anything, but they're all there to form an ecosystem of edible plants and edible plants. This is what a mature food forest looks like. Uh, this is actually in Washington. You have your meadows and uh, granules and herbs and, and uh, uh, smaller shrubs, and they move into the dwarf, and they the larger trees, moving into a natural forest. In the Northwest here, we believe this is an excellent area to do food forestry, to do forest gardens, because we live in a temperate forest zone. So we are pioneering that on public lands now as we speak. Uh, this is our site. This is what we want to do. Uh, this is where we want to do the food forest. We've actually begun since this picture. But as you can see, we're two miles from downtown. We're, uh, working with absolutely nothing but grass. And so we started from real scratch. And this is costing us a bit of money, but uh, it's so far it's, it's all working out. Uh, some of you. We're not 
going to do this. We're not going to do mind pulls. We consider ourselves hard pulls. Uh, we're <laughs> adversity. Uh, yeah, um, adversity in nature is a sign of a healthy ecosystem. And we not only believe in the diversity of our plants, we believe in the diversity of our people, in our community that is working in this conflict. So this is how we're going to do it. We don't kill, we don't do anything. We leave all organics in place. We literally create a, a forest floor by sheet mulching and plant our trees and shrubs into it. And we do it all by community power and by volunteer power. We've had a lot of uh, success getting a lot of community involved. And uh, um, it's, it's, it's been good. So one of our goals here is to be a local food source. We want to be a genetic bank of plant material that is edible material that can be spread to be spread throughout the whole community through the knowledge through teaching, through gaining knowledge from our different um, different aspects of food growing and food propagating, seed saving, and so forth. We will create a food source to be more resilient in our community because we will have food in our community. We will alleviate the problems of our global food systems now by eating locally, growing locally, and having better access to organic, healthy, nutritious foods. We also want to be a gathering space. It's very important that we let a community of people uh, be an act of celebration, celebration of our abundance and our efforts. This is how you build community. One of the funnest ways to build community is to celebrate, to bring everybody together, to celebrate your cultures, to celebrate your, your differences, to learn your differences, to get over your differences, to spread knowledge down through through the generations, be multiple, multiple generational knowledge spread. We <laughs> <laughs> uh, also, uh, uh, also want to be an uh, uh, educational facility. This is, uh, this is very important for us to spread our knowledge, like you said. <laughs> but uh, uh, there's so much to learn, and there's so many people in Seattle and artists and scientists and climbers and bringing these people together. We have this great resource of very creative people. And we want to experiment. We want to be different. We want to try and, and to try to find new ways and new species, new varieties that actually can work with our changing planet. So that's a big part of our education. Uh, so in 2010, we, uh, we approached Seattle Public Utilities, who actually owns the land that we're on. We're on the uh, west facing slopes of Jefferson Park. This is not Seattle Parks, this is Seattle Public Utilities. This is water quality land. In our, in our opinion, it's sacred land. We have, every, we have every intention to be respectful of the quality of the water in our city with our garden. Matter of fact, we're going to teach better ways of using water how water can be used more wisely. But anyway, in 2010, we uh, approached the city and uh, we brought a drawing that had 13 acres and nothing much skin compost out of it. But, you know, they, they came back with seven that we could work with. And but really what they needed is we needed to prove that we had community support. This is public thing. So we got a grant, we hired a, a design consultant, and we began throwing design parties for our community, open to the entire city. People come in, bring in their input, and uh, tell us what they'd like to see in what could be the nation's largest public food forest. We had a lot of support. We had hundreds of people show up to say that they wanted to see it. It was great. SPU granted us the use of this land, seven acres. But we have to do phase one first. And this is what we're building right now. Um, it is about two acres, and it's basically a micro of the macro. And it, everything, all the components of the large are in the small. So we will learn all about how to do it in a small way. Small and simple. Stay simple. And then we're going to go big, and we're going to produce abundance. Abundance right locally in our neighborhood. And that's our goal. Uh, as you can see, it's all about relationships. We have uh, we, we not only about plant relationships, but the people relationships. We're working with a veterans hospital. We're building ADA accessible uh, raised beds for our veterans to build uh, um, therapy gardens. Uh, we're working with Ace Emerson Middle School. We're working with. Uh, I'm not sure back there. Uh, 
bikes brought in all our trees by bicycle when we were around the age of day. I would have been dead. So we brought in 20 some trees by bicycle, which was a great festivity that we all enjoyed. Um, we're working with uh, East Mercer Middle School, and uh, these will be too. Absolutely essential we pass this knowledge on the pair of children involved in this. These are the future of this garden. And we realize that, and we need to teach them well. Um, we're working with EMW. EMW is actually going to be doing, uh, we're working with their architecture department to design builds class, and they're going to design and build a community plaza, our, our sort of educational facility, gathering celebration area. That will be in the upper area. Uh, it's a community. We're, we're just building a community. Um, that's Aaron, the computer guy. You know, totally needs to unplug and get out there with a shovel. You just been dying to do that. Maybe you need to do that. Good for you. And uh, we all have lunch together. We have a very fortunate thing in the house. Yeah, so that is fucking awesome. What do you think about that? Mm -hmm. For sure. Very cool. Imagine if that catches on as a trend. You know, how fucked will the globalists be with their Agenda 21 bullshit, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, you could say it is catching on in a way. I mean, look, McDonald's <laughs> profits are down, you know. <laughs> more desperate on selling crap. But, I mean, imagine if more areas start doing stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And that's the sort of inspiration social media can attain. Because, you know, people who would have never thought of doing something like that would see a video like that and be like, hey, maybe we could do that in our area. And then it just kind of goes out from there, you know? Still there? Uh -huh. Okay, because I'm showing the the video seems to have frozen up a little bit, so. And Google Hangout is frozen up entirely. Weird. I mean, I can hear you just fine, obviously. And we are still broadcasting. Oh, there it goes. There it is. Cleared up. Yep, there it is. Okay. I just wasn't sure if, like, the connection was in the process of dropping or what was going on. Okay. Although now your your mic volume's dropping. Can you hear me? Oh, I can hear you. It's just super low. Oh, that's probably because I was mumbling. Ah, oh, there we go. Now it's higher. Yeah, because I was mumbling. The reflection with what all we're talking about. My friend Tiffany just messaged me out of the blue saying, Hey Dave, just wanted to say I love you and thank you so much for being there for me through everything. 
Cool. So that was just kind of synchronistically, like, totally out of the fucking blue. So that's cool. Telling her about this hangout we're on now in case she doesn't already know. I mean, she's way too shy to jump in and join us. I'm just giving her the the view link in case she wants to watch it. She said, sweet, I'll get on my laptop and check it out right now after I, I brush my teeth. What? Uh, now my Google thing is gone completely. It's just a white screen. Weird. I can hear you fine though. But your video is frozen. Yeah, I'm gonna reset it. Be momentary. Well, how long have we been on this hangout? I haven't even been keeping track. It's been at least a couple hours, hasn't it? That's weird. Now you're in twice. <laughs> uh, the other one will drop out here momentarily. As yeah. I realized that I just refreshed the whole damn thing. Yeah. How long have how long have we been on this thing? I mean, I know it's been at least a couple hours. I'm sure. Yeah, maybe two or three. Now, and speaking of ideas of you know land being sacred and all that and certain religious groups thinking that only their land is sacred and blah 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 um, kind of brings me back to this I know I mentioned this a bit earlier with you but I didn't show the picture the holy land is everywhere huh. that's yeah, what I'm talking about yeah you told me about that that's fine yeah, you know, as as long as we're you know just talking about social networking and raising consciousness and all that, and oh look, there's there's Tiffany, and I said, what about breakfast at Tiffany's? As we talk about food forests and shit. Okay. Oh, remember the nice little Comedy Central kitty cat reality there? That was freaking funny as hell. It is a mark of maturity when someone hurts you. And you try to understand them. That is true. The soul usually knows what to do to heal itself. The challenge is to silence the mind. Also true. All those raging paradigms. Then this is the one we just watched. <laughs> Look at this one. Ego! In like the Lego logo type of thing. <laughs> Ego! And that's one of Daphne's posts. Huh? You know, ego, play horrible. Yeah, yeah, right. Instead of, instead, instead of Lego, meaning play well. Mm-hmm. <laughs> ego, play, play horrible. Shitty. Well, actually, there's two, two, there's two different types of ego. There's the ego that is simply just your identity, which, which is fine. And then there's, like, what I call the false ego that society likes to superimpose. So there are two types of ego. Like people, people always talk about like you know shunning ego and hating on the ego. It's like no, wait a minute here. There's two types of ego. 
There's the false ego, the societal ego, the one that we're indoctrinated into. It's it's a total falsehood. And then there's the, the real ego, the good ego, that which is simply your identity, that awareness that even though, yeah, you're one with everything, it's true that you are a separate individual and, you know, your your awareness that you are you and everyone else is everyone else. Because you couldn't really have an experience without that. If everyone was literally one at absolutely all levels and there was no separation on any levels, then things would be pretty boring. <laughs> uh -huh. So yeah, Daphne's talking about that. There's Daphne. Um, but yeah, she's she's still clearing a lot of stuff. So uh, she's still, I think, slightly a bit in the old paradigm when it when it comes to ego and all that. But she's. Uh, you know, she's moving out of it at her own pace. Because there is the true oh. ego, which is fine. And then there's that false ego, the indoctrination, the bullshit. Here's, here's an interesting paradigm up with her. Uh, there are now two B-29 super fortresses that are now airworthy. There's no longer just one. Um, this is kind of big aviation news. Um, the aircraft's name is Doc. Air and Fortresses? Super Fortress, B-29 Super. Air. So oh, you, oh, mean oh, like, oh. you mean like frickin' Marvel, Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. kind of Air Fortress? Oh, these are World War II aircraft. Let me pull up oh, an image okay. so that way you're not mixing up images. You're not mixing up people's perceptions here. Some people only hate you because of the way other people love you. Yep, haters gonna hate. <laughs> uh -huh. No matter what, that's why trying to appease everybody is a waste of time. It's what society teaches us to do, and it's, it's impossible to do. There's no way in hell to win everybody's approval. Not gonna happen, no matter what you do, no matter how hard you try. It's not gonna happen. Okay, here it is. Ah, okay. That is the Boeing B-29 Super Fortress. It was the pivotal aircraft that ended World War II, and there are now two of them that are, well, there's been another one that has been welcomed into the airworthy status as of today, and it was welcomed out in Wichita. There's been one flying for the commemorative Air Force for years under the name of Fifi, but now there is another one by the name of Doc who's going to be joining the Fifi in the skies, which is pretty dang cool. So, yet again, just the energetics reinstating that all is well. There's the article there on Facebook. I see. So, yeah, pretty exciting. It just happened to pop on my Facebook, another piece of inspiring news. <laughs> Marijuana vending machines. Eleven scientific ways to be happy. Meditate, rewrite your brain, practice smiling, sleep more, 
patience, gratitude, help others, exercise, go outside, move closer to work, spend time with family and friends, plan a trip, play the ukulele. <laughs> what I will say is that it's scientifically true that um, the emotional states that are more, shall we say, positive and productive do have a more you know, shall we say health-wise, positive and, and productive effect on, you know, DNA and organ systems and things like that. Whereas when we're stressing our cells out, we're pumping all that stress hormone into our cells. And stress hormone is so, you know, detrimental to the immune system that it's actually used in um, anti-organ rejection drugs in order to shut down the immune system so that the body doesn't reject the new organ during an organ transplant. There's synthetic versions of the stress hormone that are used for that, so, yeah, pretty nasty stuff. So, um, people who are always stressed all the time, stressed, 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 and then they, they wonder why, you know, they end up 40 with, like, the, you know, the body of an 80-year-old. Well, that's why, because all that stress hormone is very corrosive and destructive, and it shuts down your immune system. <laughs> I thought this was cool. Someone posted, me and my boyfriend moved together a few months ago. We met through our mutual love of, of gaming. Here's our new living room slash battle station. That's kick ass. <laughs> I need to get I need to get myself a nice black leather chair. That's the only thing I'm missing. Yeah, I know my reaction to that was like, I want the chair. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean the office chair. Done, yeah. The office chair I have now is pretty cool, but well I already have a nice big huge forty two inch freaking mega wide screen so like I'm I'm set for screen and all that stuff but I'd really love a nice good you know solid chair like that I mean my current office yeah, chair is decent but yeah I'm sitting on an old wood antique practically yeah nice office chair would be wonderful This is a good example of owning one's emotions. It's little clips from a Simpsons thing. Um, you want to be sad, honey? Be sad. We'll uh, we'll ride it out with you. And when you get finished feeling sad, we'll still be there. From now on, let me do the smiling for both of us. And um, it says one of the most um, one of the best mom moments in TV history. I wish more parents knew how important it is to validate their children's feelings. So yeah, I mean, that's that's exactly what, you know, what I talk about as far as you can't change what you don't own. So you have to own your emotions. You have to see your emotional states no matter what they are as being valid. And then that gives you a choice of being able to switch from what you don't prefer to what you prefer because you can only change what you own. But if you see your emotions as some external, you know, victimizing monster thing that you have no control of whatsoever, then you're just going to end up in a in a negative feedback loop, freaking spiral of crap. So, and that's what society teaches us to do. How a blonde eats a banana. <laughs> I wish I could find the article on this, but I just kind of found the picture caption. 15-year-old chased a car on his bike for 15 minutes to save this 5-year-old girl who was snatched from her front yard in Pennsylvania. This is the sort of stuff social media can let you know happens. 
I mean, if you're in a freaking, you know, a paradigm of, oh, there's only misery and I don't want to look and see if there's anything good, then you don't see positive stories like this. So you don't, you don't know that anything good actually happens in the world. Oh, here's something to get all the fundamentalists all butthurt. Proof that God exists, proof that Spider-Man exists. Yeah, exactly. A book is proof of nothing. Nothing. Is there proof that God exists? Yeah. Just kind of look around at nature and the universe and interactions between human beings and real-life miracles and shit like that. You know, the proof is in, in living life. The proof is not in any fucking book. And you and me both being Christians and both agreeing on that premise. Well, you know, the fundamentalists can uh, go to the Ukraine and cry me a river. Here we go. What does school really teach children? Truth comes from authority. Intelligence is the ability to remember and repeat. Accurate memory and repetition are rewarded. Noncompliance is punished. Conform intellectually and socially. Exactly. I can safely say this is all school ever fucking taught me. Period. Finito. This is what I got out of school. Right there. That's it. Be a slave, obey, be insecure, be mature, don't think for yourself, everyone else is better than you, everyone else is an authority over you, try to appease everybody else, don't be yourself, you'll never be good enough, obey, 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 reality is what you're told it is, fuck you. That is all school and life and reality ever taught me. Anything that I've learned that's worth having learned, I learned on my own. Only you can prevent faucet fires. <laughs> those faucet fires are a scam. Those are made up by those people. Those don't really happen. I love that documentary about fracking. Because they also show like regular mainstream, you know, like news media stories about it. To where, like, you know, local mainstream yeah, channels don't where these things happen. Sources. Oil companies don't lie ever. Yeah. Even even though when when they're in court, they can't answer any of the fucking questions. They're just kind of like, you know, dismissive and just like, that's our business. Go away. They can't they can't answer any questions in a straight about way. You know, it's like. They're asked, has it been proven that, you know, these are totally safe and they do no environmental damage and so on and so forth. And their answer is like, well, we don't actually have any materials available to show you that, um, you know, we could prove that they're safe. But just take our word for it. They are. It's like, you don't need proof. These aren't the droids you're looking for. Move along. <laughs> If not us, who? If not now, when? Yeah, exactly. Good one from Rochelle the Young. Everybody always want to pass the buck. No, not me, not us, not now. Always putting it off. Someone else, some other time. Don't take responsibility. Pass the buck. Be butthurt. Be a slave. Be a sheep. To live a creative life, we must lose our fear of being wrong. True. Going back to what I quoted Einstein on there earlier. Anyone who's never made a mistake has never tried anything new. Nothing can dim the light which shines from within. Well, except, of course, you, if you choose to. <laughs> Tears are words that need to be written. That's up from Katerina. I am Democrat, Republican, awake. Exactly. Two-party system's a scam. Yeah, I 
pretty much Mike Brown shared that, and then I shared it and forwarded it. This one's great. So. When people are too yeah, lazy, to sc- people are too lazy to skull fuck. Missouri teen steals what they think is cocaine, ends up sm- snorting their grandfather's ashes. Ouch! <laughs> uh, I am still laughing about that. Uh, Religion is for people who are afraid of going to hell. Spirituality is for those who've already been there. Still there. Yeah. (laughs) Says a certain person who thinks hell is the only real reality and thinks there's only one type of woofing farm. Who shall remain nameless? Then he will probably never walk. I don't know woofing farm. And who probably never watch this? Who probably never watch this anyway because they're too busy being all pity pouty pooty and and bitching at people on online games and whatever. So that person will probably never even hear this conversation. I'm playing War Thunder. I'm playing War Thunder, okay? What the hell? He shot me in my tank. What the heck? <laughs> I was, you know, dang it, I got killed again. What the fuck? Man. That's like half of the dialogue in any kind of Skype conversation with that person. Damn, Panzer 3. <laughs> Ah, oh, he hit me with a good 105 shell. Went right through my center section. Blew me in half. Get this, Tate. The shell went in the rear, went through the driver, and then bounced out through the commander's hatch. And that's how JFK was assassinated. <laughs> 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 Word of God, true story. <laughs> Oswald is there to testify, along with the five other shooters. <laughs> and Kissinger on the grassy knoll with the big old 357 Magnum with the bowler scope. No, Kissinger on the grassy knoll naked rolling around with Bush Sr. <laughs> Bush Sr. with the rifle at the same time while they're doing it and he fires off the fatal shot. Kissinger's like, I blew more than just my load. <laughs> so, uh, Daddy Kissinger, do I uh, get that promotion? Oh, you get some promotion, all right. You get everything you want. Mm. I'll get it. I always like being a daddy's boy. <laughs> New world order. Oh, should we close this thing out? Yeah, it would probably be a good idea. But I'll show this first. I've never seen a clock that frustrates me so much. <laughs> uh huh. That's funny. I think, I think it was Kristen that shared that. I think so too. Oh, poor Kristen. Too busy self-sabotaging herself and bashing her own beauty. Well, she's been doing a lot of clearing and making a lot of progress as well. At least she's giving herself permission to feel how she feels, whereas before she was not, so that is progress. Mm-hmm. 
make friendships that go deeper than gossiping, drinking, and going out. Make friends who <clears throat> you can get, who you can go get breakfast with. Make friends with people who support your life goals and who help you to become a better person. Yeah, that's one thing I've had to learn. All those fucking, you know, the haters out there, just let them go. So I guess we can bring this to a close now, unless that you have anything else you want to add. Negative. Uh, I've got nothing else further to add. I think this conversation has been good, and I think it's time we sign this whole thing out. Well, then I will just close on this sentiment. Just, <clears throat> you know, be yourself to the fullest, be brave, share on, on social media, you know, share what you're doing, share how you're feeling, and, you know, let yourself inspire others and, you know, don't let the fact that, you know, that you're human having human moments make you think that, you know, what you have to say isn't worth anybody hearing. And there's always going to be haters. So you don't have to believe the haters, you know. There's always going to be haters no matter what you do. Like Winston Churchill said, um, love isn't appeasement, appeasement is. So, you know, anybody who can't accept you for who you are, fuck them. And respect their right to not accept you. So, yeah, be the change and all that good shit. And uh, peace out. Oh, I guess I should end with uh, believe nothing, disbelieve nothing, question everything. It's usually what I end with. So, we are now ended. Unless it looks like you're about to say something, either that or you're constipated. The mind, in the words of Plutarch, the mind is not a vessel to be filled, but fire to be kindled. Be inspired, be strong, be courageous, be bold, and have honor. And live long and prosper. Live long and prosper. <laughs>